system and uh, that means it is free to you so go and enjoy freetalklive.com you can also connect with us on the air via skype our skype username is lrn.fm so feel free to reach out in that way if you like it is uh, apparently a holiday today i found this out uh, today veterans day but i guess that used to be called armistice, armistice. yeah day. armistice day yep what what was the Armistice Day thing about? Well, right? that was uh, World War One. It was the eleventh month, uh, the eleventh day of the eleventh month at the eleventh hour was when World War One was. Uh, they signed a treaty to to cease it at that time, and we've read on Free Talk Live several times, sort of the the names and what happened to the last uh, soldiers to die from each side on that uh, th- those days. And interestingly, in some cases, they died actually after 11 a.m. Mm. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's really kind of weird because at 10.59— you're at this in this legal state of war where you're killing people mm-hmm. and getting away with it, and it's good and just and right. At but 11 o'clock, that. ding, then killing somebody is a crime mm. and criminal and bad. And it's really weird because I think that pretty much everyone can agree that the people who died, the, um, you know, the last person to die on each side did nothing. Because the war didn't come to an end. The war came to an end before um, the uh, 11 o'clock because mm-hmm. these guys came and they signed stuff and they said, oh, yeah, it's going to be over. One of the guys got shot in the head while running to tell everybody, hey, there's going to be warm soup after the, uh, oh. the, the armistice. And it's, it's, really, it's, it's, it's really sad. And I think World War I is probably better than most uh, a way to illustrate the, uh, the horrors of war. So essentially, the holiday used to be a day to celebrate the end of a war, and it has been changed into Veterans Day, which is more of just a kind of worship of uh, the apparatus of war. Um, well, the, what people will tell you is, is it's honoring those that have served, mm-hmm. um, and you know, as so- pawns in uh, the politicians' game. Well, I think that that would be hard to argue mm-hmm. that uh, that that isn't the case. That uh, soldiers do the whims, of, um, you know, young men do the whims of old men, right? That's how, that's what war is. And I've actually got a story from BBC about speaking of young men, the teenage stories of World War One. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Let's go to the phones, your calls, and thoughts. Also coming up, the police officer who uh, we haven't talked about this story yet, but the video has gone viral. It is the one in which Saratoga County Sheriff's deputy slaps a man uh, because he would not consent to having his car searched. And boy, does this deputy have a mouth on him. I had to go and uh, edit out many, many F-bombs from this, what is not more than a two-minute long video. How long is? How uh, old is the guy that he uh, wants to search the car, of which he wishes Younger to? than him, probably in his 20s. Would be my guess. That's why he's uh, cussing in order to establish dominance and intimidate the young man. So let's go first, though, to Pete, who is in Long Beach, California. You're on Free Talk Live. Pete. You know, well, uh, I have to make a comment about that. Then I have to tell you why I support the Westboro Baptist. Okay. okay. Well, the first thing is, look, when World War Three happens and people have no more illusion of nothing to lose, a young man's going to put a bullet in that corrupt uh, enemy soldier's head named a police or policy man. Second thing is, look. What? Okay. Did you just say that, just to clarify, did you just say that you thought the soldiers would shoot the police in the United States? No, I said that a policeman is an enemy soldier. A constitutional sheriff is a friendly, but people like that, that's an enemy soldier because they're an unconstitutional policy man of the elite. So when people have no illusion of that they have something left to lose when stock market crashes or whatever— that young man's going to put a bullet in that guy's face. You What's mean the guy that slapped, the, the, the man that was slapped by the police officer. What's unconstitutional course, about know. a local police officer? What's unconstitutional? Yeah. Well, it says that only a sheriff, which is elected by the people, is the constitutional person. See, the police chiefs and whatnot, unless they have been sworn in and they're elected by the people, they're not constitutional. I mean, well, um, we can argue this. I, I, I'm just I'm trying to understand here. So the Constitution is a set of restrictions for the federal government. It doesn't say it's what lo- to be. Yeah, well, that's the idea. Um, and but it doesn't say what local governments can do. So the word sheriff doesn't appear in the United States Constitution. Yeah, I mean, I, well, it, it's based on that. It was amended, but it was basically he was supposed to be the law of the land and common law. I, I know that you free staters. 
I know you free staters probably support common law. I do. Common law, no victim, no crime. What he did, he became the criminal. And back in the day, I mean, when people had some decent, God-fearing morals, quote-unquote, or traditional values, they wouldn't tolerate that. But we tolerate it. What, what we, we tolerate the sin because we're just like that. If we were any different, then you know what? We wouldn't tolerate it. But wasn't, the sheriff, evil, wasn't the sheriff the bad guy in Robin Hood? I mean, wasn't he the, uh, the, the tax the collector? Of Nottingham. For, yeah, yeah. The, the tax collector for the cr- king? He was a criminal. Just, you know, but see, it's based on actions. You know, actions speak louder than words. And, you know, you, I can wear a badge. I can get a badge at Toys R Us and say, look at me, I have authority. Just cause it's, I think it, it relates to what you said about soldiers and stuff. God, God help them and stuff. They don't realize what they're who they're fighting for. Well, first of all, the action the you're talking is, about is a violent action, and I don't think course. people are going it, to stop and pause and wonder what your message is when you're killing police. And they, uh, the people are going to start doing it left and right when they have nothing left to lose. When their when our convenience goes in this country, just like the dead Kennedys, give me convenience or give me death. I guarantee you that people are, are going to go off. Little things that used to not bother them, like a parking ticket or whatever, they're, they're going to go off. You, you're saying people are going to shoot the police over parking tickets? Oh, I guarantee you. Uh, smaller stuff than that. There's people that in, in the hood, if you will, that will kill somebody for a chicken sandwich or rob somebody for 20 bucks. You think that people in inner city America and other places are not going are, are not going to go off? They're going to be animals. We're going to see how good our human nature is unchecked by God. I mean, and this is this is exactly what I'm talking about. Because we don't want, we want other kings besides King Jesus. Because we don't. Who are you uh, speaking for when you say we? Because you're certainly not talking America, for me. Our, our, America, I don't, our uh, actions. I don't accept your representation, uh, Pete. I'm not interested in having you speak for me. You're constantly advocating violence as though it's going to solve something. Self defense. Oh, you know, well, when uh, if they, if the if EMA kicks down your door or whatever, mm. I, are you going to go to? Are you going to take the mark and go to the camps? Are you going to say enough? I don't know enough? what you're talking right. about. First of all, I'm not interested in taking any kind of mark or co- or or cooperating with the government because you you know you, the thing with the people who advocate violence and this is not uncommon. If you're fairly typical in this way, uh, the 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 people who advocate violence never see another way. They, they only see two paths. They see the path of obedience and the path of violence. And the, the truth is there's a third path, and, and thank you, Pete, for your call tonight. The third path, to me, is non-cooperation, is not going along to get along. Now, I don't necessarily believe Pete's conspiracy theory about the FEMA camps and all that. Uh, but certainly, had the Jews in Nazi Germany not been so obedient and obediently reported to the ghetto, for instance, when they were told to, uh, that probably would have thrown a real wrench in the Nazis' plans, you know, in order to you know, get everybody in the same place to more easily control them. So if people don't just go along to get along, if rather than receiving the uh, parking ticket and then shooting the police, as Pete was suggesting there, they receive the parking ticket and refuse to pay it and go to court and demand a trial and, you know, clog the system with their themselves, I find that to be a much more uh, a stronger viewpoint. Because if you shoot a cop or shoot any government employee, Pete's wrong. I mean, the, the actions don't speak louder than words. Those actions will, well, I guess in, in a way they are, I guess that is true. The actions will speak louder than words because no one's going to listen to your words if you have uh, murdered, you know, shot somebody. And I know you're going to say, well, it's not murder because you're you're acting in self-defense against these it's aggressors. It's going to look like murder to everybody else. It sure is. And they're not going to take the time to understand the subtleties and the supposed logic behind what you're advocating there. The toll-free number is 855-453. And if we want to have a chance at freedom, and I don't know if that's what Pete wants, but that's what I want. If we want to have a chance at freedom, we've got to convince people about that. And that takes words. Uh, 855-453. And if people won't listen to you, then what was the point? It's Free Talk Live. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-856-4195. 
In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1 800 856 4195. That's 1 800 856 4195. Call 1 800 856 4195. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. If you're looking for work, the person you are applying to is probably so swamped with applicants that he or she is tough to reach. So call early in the day, before 8 a.m., before the palace guards arrive. You'll need your prospect's direct number, and here's a sneaky way to get it. Suppose the company's main number is 555-5000. You should call 555-5012. When someone says, good morning, Pam Johnson, you should innocently say, oops, somebody here must have written this down wrong. I was calling for Tom Frederick. What's his direct number? If the very next thing you hear isn't Pam giving you Tom's number, it may be, good morning, Tom Frederick. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day-to-day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You've got in the studio with you tonight, Ian here. Johnny Ray. And Mark. And it is Veterans Day. We've got some related stuff to discuss here tonight. And also the uh, police story out of Saratoga in, uh, Saratoga Springs, I think it is. Anyway, in, uh, in New York, this awful cop who apparently slaps um, a young man that he has pulled over who is refusing to consent to a search uh, it's a great example of an out-of-control rogue cop, uh, and it's all caught on video. So we've actually got the audio track from it. I, I had to uh, spend a bit of time cutting out the, the F-bombs, and there are quite a few of them. The this wordy dirds? Only about a minute-long uh, track. You'll be you'll be shocked, I think, uh, at what this cop says to uh, to the guy. Even if you've seen bad cop videos before, this cop's pretty... Uh, pretty gross in uh, in his descriptions. We'll get to that here in a moment. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can get a free pound of coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. It's a subscription program. You can cancel it at any time, but it's delicious coffee. 100% organic, 
Top 1% grade Arabica beans. It's shade grown. I drink this coffee every day. It's BuzzBox coffee, and it's wonderful. Um, if you drink coffee, try a free pound. It is worth the shipping to uh, to get this free pound of coffee. But what BuzzBox does that other companies don't do is they return some of the proceeds to us so that we can give microloans through Kiva.org to people around the world. We can help folks with a hand up rather than a handout in ways that they, only they know, are best for them. And that's why I support Kiva and have supported them for years, and I'm delighted that we're able to expand into this now. So please, go get a free pound of coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com and see what you think. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts. Rich is in Montana. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Johnny Ray, and Mark. Hello, Rich. Ian, I got that last caller, Pete, right? Yeah, that's right, Pete. Can you explain to me how he was advocating violence? Um, he was, well, he was hoping for violence. How about that? He was. Well, no, I don't think he was hoping for violence. What he's telling you is it is going to happen in this country. Well, I, 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 okay, so I, mean, I, I, I agree I, with your statement that what Pete said was not an advocation of violence. However, um, I'm going to defend Ian to some extent that we deal with Pete on a regular basis. Have you heard calls from him before? I've heard, I've heard Pete before. You're, you're always, I mean, sometimes I agree with you guys, but I, I'm telling you, sometimes I think you, you're way out there on things. Well, what do you okay. think we're I way mean, out there on? Yeah. yeah. Uh, given the same situation as that kid, and I saw the video of that cop, I mean, I don't know how I would have reacted if that cop would have tried to do something like that, smack me up, smack the head. Granted, I'm probably even older than that cop. Right. But, that's that's part oh, of the problem. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> that, would, that would really push me to the limit. That cop would want that. If that cop would want to on... push you to the limit so you could pu push him back or do something else against him when he hits you. That way he'll have an excuse to blast you right there on the spot. Can't you say that cop... Well, oh, man. Well, what, you, what makes you think that somebody wouldn't just go ahead and blast that cop before he had a chance? I'm not saying that someone wouldn't do that. I'm saying that's a terrible idea, and Pete calls in relishing those ideas. He loves the honest, idea of people honest, shooting honest the police. Good, honest goodness, Ian, wouldn't you say that cop probably deserved it at that point? There's no doubt that human to human, if another person attacks you, you have the right to defend yourself. However, and, if you, and that cop attacked that kid. No doubt. If you either do it you, in the circumstances. we have the fourth, our Fourth Amendment rights in this country, or we fourth don't. Fourth Amendment? What do you mean the Fourth Amendment? That's the right to privacy. Our, our, uh, against un un unreasonable search and seizure? Right. Yeah. No, look, I agree with you. If I don't you think that. If you want to get into my car, if you want to get mm -hmm. into my car, you better get a warrant. Sure. And that's all there is to it. Hey, look, and man, I, I totally agree with you. Guy. I'm not saying you should roll over and let a cop search. I'm just saying don't shoot a cop because you're going to end up dead, and it's going to look bad for everybody else. You know, especially if you're if you are affiliated with the freedom movement. Now, again, I don't think Pete is. I think he's just some sort of violent uh, wacko that lives on the West Coast and uh, really relishes how, violence. How does the guy? You no, know, I got to defend him in this one. Can you tell me how he's a violent wacko? He relishes Can the idea play? of using violence to achieve. He wants to means. hang gay people because they're gay. I've never heard him say that. I, I, have. I don't listen you to your show listened. every night, but yeah. I've never heard him say that. Okay. He, well, he seems that. obsessed with homosexuality. Yeah, so we've heard, he, he wants to kill gay people. He wants to kill the police. Or rather, he wants other people to do it because Pete will never actually go and do those things himself. And I hope, I hope he doesn't. Not. I hope he doesn't. But, well, you know. He's constantly on the air advocating other people doing it for him. And he bound, you know, he kind of uh, he, he kind of dodges around. Maybe he won't actively come right out and say you should do this, but at the same time he clearly relishes the idea of it happening and fantasizes about that violence. It's pretty clear you from his You can't read that man. You can't read that guy's mind and say something like that. Well, I just did. What gives you the right to read somebody's mind and, and put words in his mouth and just say that's what he's saying? It's, pr it's pretty clear to me that he relishes violence. It's almost every t every time he calls. Oh, yeah, like every, every time. time he calls, usually the word in hanging comes out of his mouth. Maybe, in your mind's eye, maybe. Maybe not a lot of people that, that, that hear him talk. Okay, Rich. Well, it sounds to me like you kind of fantasize about it, too. Like you like what he oh, said about please. that. Oh, and you're sure of that? Do you know me that well? To have I just said it sounds like it. Like I didn't say I'm sure of it. I said it sounds like it. Listen, there is a time for violence in life. I think when, you're really, when's that? Bad... When's that? Huh? When is the time? 
You said there's well, a ton of Well, I don't know. Bonds. It could be any number of things, Ian. Pick one. Where's your line in the sand? It might be where a cop would slap me up thinking that he could slap me up in the back of the side of the head like that. Mm -hmm. Well, the difficult thing it when it's snowing, yeah. Be, that might be the pushing point because I'm telling you what, Pete is right. People are getting to the point in this country that they are about ready to pop. Oh, Maybe. I don't disagree this with that. I, I, I don't disagree this with that. This country is about ready to explode, Ian. I, I, I don't no. disagree. Or not, this country is about But I don't ready think that's explode. a solution to anything. Yeah, that's certainly. I, I'm with you there, Rich. Like, people are angry. There's no doubt about that. But getting violent in response to the violence of the police is not going to solve anything. Thanks for the call it tonight. I appreciate it. The uh, toll free number is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. So, you know, is Pete, is Rich, are these guys advocating violence? Not necessarily, but they're certainly fantasizing about it. Now, maybe they, maybe at the same time, they, uh, as they're fantasizing about it, they're telling themselves that they don't want that to happen, but they believe that it will happen, and so therefore, you know, they're okay with it. I don't know what the justification process is that goes on in their minds. I don't claim to know what they're thinking. All I know is what they're saying. That's all I can listen to is the words that are coming out of their mouths, and I hear. <laughs> they're rubbing their hands together. They're just waiting for somebody to give it back to the cops. Give cops, it to them good. Chickens are coming home to roost. <laughs> I have had uh, these, you know, I've had these same situations, these violent fantasies that go on in my head. I sure. see some terrible story where the cops, do, like this one, where the cops do something awful, and I get all worked up. And then I, you know, got I play some scenario out of my head, and I, uh, you know, of course I'm the winner in that scenario, and. Uh, what it does is, at the end of this the this, this situation, I'm either yelling, I'm certainly angry, um, mm. I'm you know I'm upset. It has it's broken my peace, whatever that might be. The little the tenuous hold I have on peace in my life, it's broken it at all times. Yeah, and, and, and it's and it I, like nothing's achieved. No 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 cops are harmed in the uh, creation of this fantasy. Toll free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. If Rich struck back at, a, at that cop, if he hit Rich, then Rich might be dead at this point. And what would that have really accomplished? It's Free Talk Live. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. For all our loyal listeners, it's time for another giveaway. Over the next 30 days, our friends at SupernaturalSilver.com are giving away six 16-ounce Supernatural Silver liquid valued at nearly $100 per bottle or their skin and body gel priced at $49.98. All you have to do is enter and win at GCNlive.com. Hurry, contest ends December 5th. GCN can give you and your loved ones a fighting chance with the Supernatural Silver giveaway at GCNlive.com. Free Talk Live. The Supreme Court has ruled over and over again that government has no obligation to provide any services, even services as re remedial as protection. They don't have any obligation to provide those services. So therefore, if there is no obligation on their part to provide any services, why should there be an obligation on our part to pay them? Well, there isn't. It's only an obligation of they, you know implement this thing and then you're afraid because they have guns people are scared but it's never going to end until we get in over that fear absolutely i mean we're essentially being terrorized by a group of gangsters calling themselves the u.s federal government the only difference between the federal government and a you know a thug on the street is the size of the gang it's time people start treating the irs like the thugs they are Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Majid lives in Nor Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. 
coffee.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24 7 to help you we also have other pain relieving braces too for your shoulder ankle or back you may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you so please call now 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. And enjoy the features that are waiting for you on the site. Uh, Once again, that's freetalklive.com. So, do you have some Bitcoin and you need a car? New Age Auto Sales has late model used cars that they've cared for in their own rental fleet. And since New Age Sales is selling their own well-maintained cars, the auction fees and transport costs aren't getting passed on to you. Their cars are in great condition and the price to move. They can ship anywhere in the world. So go to NewAgeAutosales.com and see what they have. They're looking for the to be the Bitcoin auto dealer, but obviously if you see something that you like and you don't have any Bitcoin, they certainly can help you. But with Bitcoin, your money never needs to be exchanged into dollars. It's NewAgeAutosales.com for late model, well-maintained cars shipped anywhere in the world for Bitcoin. Head on over to their website or give them a call and buy a car from the first Bitcoin auto dealership, NewAgeAutosales.com. They're down there in Miami, Ian, so mm-hmm. uh, they can you know ship them all over uh, all over the U.S. And I think it's uh, I think it's pretty exciting. You know, I've found people that want to buy a car in Bitcoin, but they didn't really have that many options. Yeah, it's true. Now, it's hard to find a dealer who'll take it. Now you've got now you've got an option, and they'll ship it to you. New Age Auto sales.com. That is exciting. I'm glad to hear about that. Our toll-free number here tonight, 855-450-FREE. Got more on Veterans Day. Mark, you wanted to share some kind of story of some of the the victims of the U.S. military, uh, meaning that military members who died or something like that? Or right. Well, these sure aren't U.S. military members. These, are, um, th- these were actually English um, uh, members. And I see. what they were is young men who signed up who were under the age of 18, uh, 19 mm. actually is what it was, um, was the required age at the time. And they, you know, signed up for the military and went off for adventure. And this is, what, 1914. You have a lot of, you know, not a lot to do. Uh, you know, some mining, some uh, farmhand work, and, and that's pretty much all that uh, teenage young men really had the option to do at the mm. time. We'll get into more of that here in a moment. Glenn's in Philadelphia. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Glenn. Hello, gentlemen. Hey, you're on the air. Hey, good, very good. Um, I wanted to say something about Veterans Day, but before I do, I wanted to um, chime in on this issue about the police and searching and battery and stuff like that. Um, fortunately, I live in the suburbs of Philadelphia, and fortunately, I think we must have pretty decent police forces around here because I don't hear about those types of incidents um, around here. Um, so, in Philadelphia? I, I, I got, in the suburb, northern suburbs of Philadelphia. Okay. Um, 
we we um I, I got a I got a speeding ticket, you know, minor speeding ticket, you know, revenue collection point two years ago. It was hundred bucks, no points, and the guy was practically apologetic. You know, saw it was a CDL driver and stuff, and he's just like, yeah. And he didn't fight me for points or anything like that. It was just a failure, you know, to obey a traffic signal or something, you know, traffic control instructions for, like, speed, the speeding limit fine, you know. So, yeah, you know, I've not – I don't know anybody who's had any such bad interactions. However, if I anticipated a problem and met with a policeman who was behaving aggressively like that and, you know, a chip on his shoulder and wanted to search my car, um, number one, I would probably be inclined – to let him do it because he's only going to be bored out of his mind with my, you know, antifreeze and my waterless hand cleaner and stuff like that, you know, and unless I feared he was going to plant something on me, which would be relatively rare. I would have a tendency to go I don't along know. You're just and, assuming how rare it is. I don't know how rare it is. Yeah, well, the I, reason I why you don't hear about saying, these I'm cases, uh, Glenn, is because they, you know, don't always get video. Oh, no, this no, this no, case... No, 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 let me, please let me finish. Like, I'm just kind of setting it up. They, they um... It is, and I, yeah, I'm not saying they don't happen frequently, um, but what I'm saying is, I my personally, I would have a tendency to probably a let them search, and then b take my complaints to a supervisor or to local courts or something like that. If there, if he became aggressive, you know, or if I was inclined to say, "Geez, you have a probable cause or reasonable suspicion," why would you want to do that? Um, and the answer is no, something. because when a cop to... asks you if they can search, that means they have no probable cause, because if they had probable cause, right. they wouldn't be asking you. Right. Right. Well, that, that's an obvious. Yeah, that's why I'd be pointing that out by ask, politely asking the question. And um, so, and if something bad ensued, like him hitting it's a terrible me, I'm idea, by the sure. way, to consent to a search. Yeah, I just like to insert that. Go okay, ahead. Fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. And I'd try to make sure that the interaction was caught on the car's camera. And Which car? Have that put it subpoenaed for the police car's camera. Mm. I hope you, you can know. get it because uh, there's a lot of people that right. complain right. that somehow if the now, police officer does something wrong, the footage just right. disappears. Right. There's another point here. Right. Exactly. And now, now, uh, however, in terms of strict legalities of the matter, um, Mike Rivero is, is fond of quoting, I believe, referencing, I believe it's John Bad Badow versus U.S. versus John Badow. In which, it, which it was ruled if the, if the police attack someone, the person is entitled to protect him or self, you know, up to and including lethal force. Now, the problem is you do have a he said, he said kind of thing going on there. And uh, without the camera footage, you know, you yes, you're probably in pretty bad shape. But theoretically, according to, you know, federal case precedent, the person does have the legal right to defend Great. So the camera footage is right. going to vindicate yeah. you after the fact, after you've been iced by this uh, this cop. What well, good does that do I'm you? Just saying, no, no, I'm just saying. It, well, there, it, it, it's academic, but, it, you know, you know, like that other guy said, I, I, I personally, you know, would probably not elect, you know, to engage a violent police officer. Um But theoretically, according to the law of the land in U.S. versus John Beto, that, you know, people do have the right to defend themselves against battery, even if that person's wearing a badge. Yeah, That's no doubt I'm about saying. it. I, I, yeah. I didn't deny that, then, uh, you know, I don't yeah. care. But legal, legally and morally, I think you have the, the right to do it. I don't know about legally. I'm not a lawyer. But that's, right. you know, if you if I believe what you're saying, but, then that's the there, case. There comes, um, right. But there just because you have the right to do it, it, Glenn, doesn't mean that it's a wise thing to do. And you've already indicated you probably wouldn't do it because, well, you're probably somewhat right. sane. And, and you want to survive. Well, I yeah. mean, because and at I this point. Out of the situation and then hope for, hope for ethical behavior by the authority or superiors. That's. It's just one thing you can try. Thanks, Glenn, it's for the call tonight. Crying. Appreciate right. it. The toll-free number is 855-453. What were you saying? Mike? I'd rather get slapped and live than I would, uh, you know, somehow be the hero in this situation and yeah. and use some kind of force against a police officer and have to escalate that force to the point that I'm defending myself. And I don't trust juries. I don't trust juries mm. one whit. Juries, especially are, some cop-loving juries well, out there. I, I just I, I don't trust Americans. I don't trust Americans to take a rational look at how somebody with a badge, somebody with a government uniform is acting because they they, they already say these are our heroes. Now, I'm a firefighter, and I've seen, seen this over and over again. They say these are our heroes, and certainly there are police and soldiers and firefighters that have done lots of heroic things, but the fact that they put on a government uniform does not make them a hero just mm -hmm. because they put on the uniform. So, And every, and every hero 
hero has his bad day. And you're judged by the moment by moment what you're doing. So if a police officer steps out of line and is uh, using force against somebody and somebody uses a commensurate amount of force to protect themselves and then the escalation goes to the point that a police officer gets killed... I don't trust the jury to say, mm. well, we understand why you had to continue to escalate force here. He had a right. You, you, you know, I mean, we had a police officer call in just this week and say that, no, you don't have the right to use the force the same, uh, you know, that you don't have the same right to use force that a police officer has. And that's the way they look at it. You are the serf. They are the king's men. Well, there was that case in Indiana. I think there was like an Indiana right. Supreme Court case that said that you could you know, theoretically, you know why I got to the Supreme the- Court? It's because probably because it had crappy juries along the way. I mean, yeah. I just don't trust them. And I don't know. I do not care to sit 10 years in jail while we get to the to Supreme Court to prove uh, yeah. to prove this point. No, I don't. This guy, you know, we have a system that rewards or if it doesn't if it doesn't reward, at the very least, it looks uh, looks to the askance at, uh, at at people who are bullies who decide to become police officers. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can take control here. We've also got Skype. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. Your comments on fighting back against the out-of-control police. It's tempting, but it's ultimately a terrible strategy. It's Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about anything toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We'll talk more about the Veterans Day story, Mark, that you wanted to share uh, with us here in a little bit, but the conversation has steered over towards a video that we haven't even played yet. We've got the audio track from uh, the video of the Saratoga County. I said Saratoga Springs. That's not the same place, I don't think. Saratoga County Sheriff Sergeant has been suspended and apparently a further article uh, claiming over at photographyisnotacrime.com that he has been arrested so the sheriff's department caught red-handed in this case on video. Now, the actual slap doesn't, uh, it's not shown on the video. It is, uh, it's heard. You can hear it. It's pretty clear that it, that it does happen, um, but you can't actually see it. So the video itself isn't as damning as it could be. The young man who was involved in this uh, situation was apparently with a friend who was doing the recording and uh, was not pointing at the actual action at the moment, and I don't think the officer realized he was being recorded, which may have been why the camera was not being pointed in that direction uh, to record surreptitiously the interactions of the driver and the officer. So I'm going to play that audio for you here in a moment. Also, I want to invite you over to freetalklive.com where you can enjoy all kinds of features totally free. Timesunion.com reporting Sarasota County Sheriff's, not Sarasota, Saratoga County Sheriff Sergeant was suspended after a video posted on the internet Friday captured him allegedly slapping a young man as the deputy insisted on searching his vehicle, which had a rifle on the back seat. Sheriff Michael Zorlo said Saturday that he was very disturbed, this is the high sheriff, uh, by what he saw on the video. I really am, said the sheriff. I don't condone, uh, condone activity as it's portrayed, and we're going to look into it, and we'll handle this quickly and swiftly. Sergeant Sean Glanz, Sean R. Glanz, age 48, who has been a police officer for 27 years, was suspended without pay pending an internal investigation. Isn't Glanz another word for the head of a penis? It is that. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, funny how life comes up with these names. The video was captured by a young man who filmed his friend's encounter with Glanz early Friday af- uh, Friday on in Half Moon. Glanz confronted the pair after he said they walked out of nearby woods to their vehicle, which was in the parking lot of a business. Glanz noticed a twenty two caliber rifle on the back seat. The sergeant said they were wearing dark clothes and acting suspiciously, although they broke no laws. And then the... Uh, article goes on to give you the text of the video which we've got the audio here so i'm just going to play that for you now nothing wrong. okay then it shouldn't be an issue for us to well, look it is it's just not right that you all just right. want to search my we'll car get a for search warrant okay. all right you want to do that i mean if that's the route you want to take but there's no reason you have to search my car there's just no need for it okay let's get a search warrant i wasn't in my car when all this was happening like why don't you want to search like my house or something let me see your keys. Why? I'm searching the car, that's why. You can't do that, though. You want to resist? I'm not resisting. You want to resist? Search the car. I really don't want to stand out here in the middle of the raid. Neither do right? I. So if you have nothing to hide in there. So you see how the police officer says um, that I don't want to stand out in the rain. Mm-hmm. As though it's the free person, the 
citizen, the you know non uh, initiator here. They're I call some, him the victim in this situation. Okay, the victim. It's their fault that all of this is occurring. Mm. And I have seen this happen time and time again with activists here in in Keene, New Hampshire, and frankly around uh, the world. When you read it, it's like uh, you know, yeah, people blame uh, you know, blame the activist. Well, it's there's somebody, there's a living, breathing, sentient human being on the other end of this. If you don't want to stand out here in the rain, get your Go butt away. back in your car. <laughs> get out of here. Yeah. I'm standing here because you're making me. I'm not making you do this. You're the one with the gun on your hip that's liable to use it. Yeah, this guy's uh, a loose cannon, and he's dangerous, and uh, so, you know... Kudos to this guy for staying as cool as he does under the pressure. That, when I say this guy, I mean the victim. Uh, for staying as cool as he does, he does. Under, yes, he does. under pressure. We're just going to check. All right. We'll be on our merry way. All right. Understand? Yeah. F***ing hole. Mm -hmm. Well, now that he's saying all right, does that mean he's consenting to the search? Is this a consensual search? <laughs> you know, he's saying okay. Well, what else is he supposed to do? Seems like he's under uh, under duress, I would say this. Yeah, arguably it is now a consensual yes. search. Yeah. It would be interesting to see them make that argument. I don't think they're going to bother with this. Apparently, they have arrested the officer in this case. That was intense. You like that, huh? I can get a lot more intense. Can you slap me okay. around? Yeah. You will. Put your f***ing head off down your neck. Give me your name, then. Now, right. that's professional right there. Yep. Well, any I'll of these... rip your effing head off and S down your neck. Right. All of this is unacceptable. Now, I haven't heard this young man cuss at all. No, no. Every uh, every bleep I've made, even the ones that were in the background, uh, were kind of quiet. We're all made by the officer. So I believe that uh, every police officer, sheriff's officer, every law enforcement officer in the country should be wearing a camera and a microphone and that that stuff should be uploaded to the Internet for his employers, us, to be able to view whenever we want. I would also like to stipulate that if you're working for me, you will keep the cussing to a minimum. You may cuss after you've been thoroughly cussed at, mm. but before that, you will not cuss at people. Because if you were working in my retail store and you cussed at my customers okay. when they came in like not that, okay. yeah, you're going to be out the door. And I don't care anything about your stinking union and your stinking pension and whoever it is that you think that you've got to take care of. If you cared about your kids and them being taken care of, you shouldn't be cussing at your bosses. You will. Put your head off down your neck. It's nice. That's real nice. I'm glad this guy got arrested. He's a crappy cop. Yeah. And listen to me. I know there's a bunch of cops out there that, that act like this on a regular basis. You're crappy cops. I hope you get it like this guy gets it. Officer Change your ways. Glands. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I didn't name him. So, according to photography, is not a crime. Two days after the video went viral in this case, and we will post this on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter, so you can see it for yourself, showing a Saratoga County Sheriff's deputy slapping a man because he didn't consent to having his car searched. The deputy was arrested and jailed by his own department, Sergeant uh, Sergeant so Sean Glands was placed on unpaid administrative leave and was forced to resign in what will probably go down as the quickest internal investigation in the history of law enforcement. The news was announced on the department's Facebook page with a press release. He's been charged with official misconduct, a Class A misdemeanor, as well as a, uh, harassment second degree, which is a violation. So apparently no assault charge, uh, just official misconduct. It seems like uh, they're going kind of light on him. Well, know. that's I'm yes, uh, they are, but um, I think that that's all we can expect, and I think it's a huge step in the right direction. According to, I no, go ahead, Ian, please, no, please. Well, I would say, Mark, pursuant relative to what you were saying before, I'd say he's a crappy cop because he's sloppy and undisciplined and unprofessional in his language. But I'd say his disregard for the uh, for for the taxpayer is in keeping with the very highest traditions of the police and that that kind of police officer is is going to be a success if he can be dignified in his assault on the public. What's that mean precisely? What do you mean by dignified in his assault on the public? Not not say F this, F that all the time or talk about just not use bad language, but be cool and calm and collected, but still be 
threatening and malicious and ultimately effective in yeah, getting cops. getting the money out of the out of the people that you're accosting. Some cops know how to do what you're talking about is to act professional while engaging in this you know, very scummy activity of extracting money and obedience from people. At, at the very least, some of them are are more friendly about how they approach things. But, you know, when you're threatening somebody to, or when you're demanding somebody consent to a search, you've already crossed the line into unfriendly cop mode. And so I guess in that case, you might as, go all, might as well go all the way and live up to your last name. Uh, so the toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Glanz was reached on Saturday by the Times Union for comment, and he had the, uh, the brilliant idea of going ahead and speaking to the media in this particular case. He said, quote, you saw the video. It doesn't look good. I'm all about doing the right thing. I had to go to that point because of the factors that came into play. There was a gun that was involved that I spotted in the vehicle, unquote. Asked if he would have handled the matter the same way again, Glenn said he would, but not if he knew that he was being filmed. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we should have cameras and microphones on all the police. He acknowledged that he did not know the incident was being video recorded, saying, quote, I was concerned it was a public safety issue. If I had to do it all over again, I'd probably do the same thing. If I knew the camera was there, no, because it does look bad. So what an admission. I mean, just right out there in the open, I will behave differently and less like a violent thug if I know I'm being recorded. But if there's no camera, then F it. I'll do the exact same thing because I do whatever the hell I want to. There's no camera around. And had there been no camera around, this young man would have had no case to complain. It would have just been some guy making an allegation against one of their friendly cops. It's Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, November 11th, 2014. Silver is trading at $15.59 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,155 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $366. 
Antiwar.com reports Haider al Bara, the head of the self proclaimed government in exile of Syria, the Syrian National Coalition, yesterday blasted the U.S. for its attacks on the Islamic State, saying they are undermining the rebellion they think will eventually land the Syrian National Coalition in power. The Syrian National Coalition is nominally the head of the Free Syrian Army, one of the primary moderate rebel factions, but one which is also virtually entirely landless, as the Islamic State and Jabhat al-Nusra take most of the rebel territory. Bara insisted the Islamic State is only a symptom of the problem in Syria and that the faction taking half of the country could be solved by the U.S. attacking the Assad government instead. Bara was also critical of the U.S. for attacking Nusra, which is al-Qaeda's wing in Syria, saying it was undercutting the Syrian National Coalition's effort for a permanent solution to the crisis, which is to say their installation as the actual government. You can support FPP Radio by joining the Fans Program. Fans are friends, allies, and numeri supporters. Fans help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the Fans Program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's F-A-N-S dot fppradio.com. CNET reports Google likes to call its most ambitious projects moonshots. Now with the company's latest real estate expansion, it's leasing land from an agency that one could say knows a few things on the topic. NASA on Monday said it is renting the historic Moffett Airfield, a 1,000 acre airbase located four miles from Google's Mountain View, California headquarters to Google's Planetary Ventures subsidiary. NASA Administrator Charles Bolden said in a statement, As NASA expands its presence in space, we are making strides to reduce our footprint on Earth. Google plans to use the site for space exploration, aviation, robotics, and other emerging technologies, according to the statement. Google agreed to pay $1.16 billion over 60 years for the space and promised to renovate and restore historical Zeppelin hangars on the premises. The move punctuates Google's ever-increasing commitment to projects outside of its main business and moneymaker, search and advertising. The list of ambitious projects is long, some of which are run by its Google X research division. Among them are efforts to create 3D sight technology, contact lenses for diabetic patients, and research efforts with the goal of lengthening the average person's life. The company has also worked on robotics, balloons to beam internet connections across the globe, and driverless cars. David Ratcliffe, VP of Real Estate and Workplace Services, said in a statement that the company will roll up its leaves to restore the landmarks on the site. Google declined to make further comment. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Reuters reports three civil rights workers slain in Mississippi in 1964 will be awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, joining Meryl Streep and singer Stevie Wonder among the 19 recipients of America's highest civilian honor this year. The posthumous honorees include James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Michael Schwerner, who were killed as they participated in the Freedom Summer Drive to register black voters in Mississippi. Their deaths helped galvanize support for civil rights legislation and inspired the film Mississippi burning. President Obama said in a statement from activists who fought for change to artists who explored the furthest reaches of our imagination, from scientists who kept America on the cutting edge, to public servants who helped write new chapters in our American story, these citizens have made extraordinary contributions to our country and the world. Other recipients include television newsman Tom Brokaw and Charles Sifford who helped desegregate U.S. professional golf. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
According to a new report released this week by the Pew Research Center, a rising number of weak, emasculated men are working as stay-at-home dads, with a steadily increasing number of feeble, pathetic fayboys choosing to spend their days cooking, cleaning, and performing other submissive duties. Well, our findings indicate that more and more pussified half-men are not going to work and instead are embarrassing themselves by purchasing groceries, packing children's lunches, and denying all aspects of their masculinity on a daily basis. The Onion spoke to one of these effete, pathetic excuses for men to get his response on the new report. I love being able to stay home with Angela. I mean, it's a lot of work, but I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. What a f***ing pussy. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up what you want. Just dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. For those of you just tuning in, you missed the full audio of the police officer in Saratoga, New York, uh, the sheriff's deputy who has apparently slapped a young man. You can't actually see the slap occur on the video, but uh, you can hear it. And uh, the officer, this, I'll just give you the highlight of what he had to say during the encounter. Rip your f- head off, f- down your neck. Give me your neck. Yes, he will rip your effing head off and then S down your neck because you've refused to consent to a search. Now, when uh, a police officer does ask you to search your vehicle, sometimes they'll say it in a way that doesn't really sound like they're asking, especially if they're littering their uh, terminology with words like the F-bomb and the S-bomb. Uh, Which this guy, you know, so much we had to bleep everything out he said. He he must have said the F word 10 times in a one minute time frame in this video. So when they're saying things to you at the side of the road, uh, one of the things that they might commonly say is, I'm going to have to ask you to search your car. And when they're saying it with their hand on their gun and when they, you know, intersplice the F-bomb in there, it can sound like a pretty threatening thing. But even on its own without the F-bomb, I'm going to have to ask if I can search your car or I'm going to have to ask to search your car just to make it even shorter and more impactful. I'm going to have to ask to search your car. I'm going to have to ask to search your car now. That's right. He He's claiming he has to ask because he has no probable cause. That's what the statement actually means. It means, I don't really have a reason to search your car. I have no probable cause. There's no evidence that I have that I can use to legally search your car now, sir. May I please search? Because I would really like to find something to arrest you on. So if you will just allow me to search your car, that would in- it would increase the odds that I will be able to find something. Because I don't have anything right now. I really don't have anything to go on. So that's why I'm asking you, sir, please, please, will you let me search your car so I can find something, hopefully, with which to arrest you and charge you criminally? That's what he's saying in that very short, I'm going to have to ask to search your car. You know, I don't understand. That's what that means. Th- there, are, there are countries where you they can't even ask. I don't understand why we let them ask. What do you mean they can't ask in some countries? As, really? As I understand, there's some countries in Europe where they're not allowed to search. They're not even allowed to ask you to wow, search you. Wow, I'd love to learn more about that. That's they, fascinating. They, if, if they're going to search, they need the probable cause. Hmm. And if they don't have the probable cause, they're not allowed to ask. That's amazing. Wow, that would be great. Uh, nothing prohibits— I mean, here's—do do American citizens walk up to uh, U.S. police officers, uh, police officers in the United States, and say, I'm going to have to ask to search you now? That would be a fun video to make. In fact, I would love to see someone do that. But yeah, you could totally do it that. It appears as though you're walking around armed and belligerent. Uh, I'm going to have to ask to search you now. There was that one video of the guy who approaches a cop in a car and basically you know, uses the tactics that the police use on people against the cop. It was actually pretty entertaining. I don't remember the details on it, but somebody has essentially done what you're talking about. But that would, be, done. A, that would be an entertaining video. Unfortunately, you know, in, in New Hampshire um, and in a couple of other states, there's like a handful of states which have this two-party consent rule, meaning that you can't just walk around recording people in public generally or you might face some wiretapping charges. So in the case in New York, I think they're a one-party consent state, so therefore the man who is recording this encounter where this lovely police officer slaps the young man couldn't be charged with wiretapping and ultimately the cop was you know, caught 
uh, red-handed in this case. And by the way, he's unapologetic. For those of you just tuning in, the officer uh, said he would behave in the same way in the future uh, as long as he didn't think he was being recorded. He just comes right out and and uh, and admits that. So, but it, it still would be instructive to take a video camera just out in the open and walk around and find police officers on the streets or in their cruisers, and then use that line on them. It would be very interesting to see what their response was. I don't think it's going to go well for you. <laughs> yeah, depending on where you in Keene, New Hampshire, we could probably get away with it, no problem. But in a lot right, of the other expectation places. is that you guys are going to be jerks already. So they, uh, when they have to deal with this in other places where they're not, they're not expecting that. When you take somebody way out of their comfort zone, because this is a real dis disrespect to say i'm gonna to have to search your car now mm. is it a very disrespectful thing to do to somebody especially if you've ever had your car searched by a law enforcement officer usually what they do is they throw crap around and let you oh, clean it up yeah. so i mean this is the it's a high form of disrespect to ask this so and police officers are not used to experiencing this form of disrespect wait police oh you mean in in return i got you right they wouldn't they wouldn't want to <laughs> no 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 you will not be doing that to me yeah if you've got do you a, not know who, to whom you speak yeah it's one thing to do it in in little Keene, new hampshire where we live and we've had now probably a almost a decade of uh recording the police on a regular basis here they're well you know acclimated to being on camera um, if you're up against a cop that's acting like this, though, you probably want to tread carefully. I mean, somebody who's going to say something like that to you, whether or not they know they're on video, is a very dangerous character. And, uh, yeah, you don't want to run into that guy. I, think I have that. to say that I think the I think the badge cam, the avant going down that road is a waste of time, though. OK, because advocating the police have cameras on them right on their bodies. Why? Be- because they'll just like they do, just like you were already suggesting in this very show, they will find a way to shed themselves of that evidence somehow. They mm-hmm. will claim that you know when they're making up when they're when they're making up their story after the fact, and they are the only ones with access to their to that footage. If it's damning, then they'll simply get rid of it. Oh, there's an argument. I agree to be made with you. Uh, yeah, I agree with you on that. But I do stipulate most times when I talk about the uh, the badge cam thing is is that it should be uploaded immediately to the internet through their cell phones i mean right now you have uh, programs like bambuser Mm -hmm. where your cell phone can stream video live to the internet um and problem is battery the problem is uh cell phone batteries i mean i don't know if you've ever you know if you've got a smartphone you usually can't get through a whole day of using that thing uh, it's going to go dead on you. And if it's recording video and transmitting that video, that cop's going to have to be changing out batteries or constantly charging as as he's driving around. That's a real ch- – I think te- there's a techno- technological barrier to that happening right now. Now, in the future – Tesla when- will take care of it. But you, right now Tesla? we can ch- – Tesla? The, the Tesla the, coil? Elon Musk. Oh, um, they're creating better battery technology as we speak. Right. No, I believe that in the future you'll be able to get through a whole day, no you problem. You just make the uh, the bulletproof vest out of uh, a giant battery. A battery, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mark, I think that uh, I have no doubt that you could design a great policy that that really worked well, except I don't think that they would honor it yeah, because, because they're not honorable people. At the very least, we'd be able to see what it looked like if they when they didn't honor it. And the thing is, is when I think about private security, that's working for me to protect me and that sort of thing. I'd want that video too. If something goes down, I want to see what happened. I want to see what uh, you know how these people react. These are important jobs. We're asking a lot of people that protect us and police, sheriffs, security guards. These people. We're asking a great deal from them, and they get paid commensurately for it. We want the best people who make the best decisions right there doing these jobs. All right, so Johnny Ray, I get where you're coming from, and there's a lot of evidence that you know backs up what you're saying. I think in the end, it would simply the 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 great effect. I think in the end, all it would do is represent a windfall for some for for various and sundry camera manufacturers and camera retailers. It certainly they would, would be, get a bunch of money, and we would get precious little new information. I don't know, Johnny Ray, on because the doings of the police. You look at the early tests of these technologies in departments. There have been a few of them now. And they show there was Rialto, California, and there have been others from what I understand. 
but they show that the use of force reports by both officers and individuals who you know are dealing with the officers goes down dramatically when the police have cameras on their bodies. So maybe there would be certain circumstances where, oops, the video disappeared. Shucks, we didn't. Oh, our cameras malfunctioned while that man's head got smashed off the pavement, and uh, we, we claim it wasn't us. You know, that will happen. I, I don't doubt that that will happen. It certainly has happened with the dash cams, where dash cam footage mysteriously just didn't get recorded of some sort of crazy situation. But the fact is the numbers of reports go down. I mean, the violence, the use of force reports goes down on both sides. So that shows to me that there is an effect and that it is a positive one. Well, my goal is not necessarily for violence to go down. My goal is for people to my goal is for the people and the police to realize that you're not entitled to my money without me contracting with you voluntarily. Sure, but and in I the don't... meantime if you can stop some cop from bouncing someone's head off a curb because the cops wearing a camera, I think that's worth pursuing 855 450 free is the toll-free number you can share your thoughts on police cameras it's free talk live here's a special message for those of you who owe the irs at least ten thousand or more in back taxes the irs has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you 800-691-6129 that's 800-691-6129 stop the wage garnishments levies and tax liens now once you've qualified and enrolled the irs will stop all the collection activities against you these unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today is October 29th, 2014. Gold opened at 1223.40. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1268.34, 634.17 for a half ounce, or 317.09 for a quarter ounce. That's 1268.34, 634.17, and 317.09. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase, and there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on join the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. 
Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We invite you here to dial in toll-free and bring up anything you want. You can comment on police cameras. Johnny Ray says that it's a waste of time. They're just going to erase the footage. Uh, it's any damning footage that they happen to capture with these cameras. So why bother spending any effort politically to try to institute cameras on every single officer, as Mark was suggesting should be done? I'm on Mark's side on this one, but you're welcome to share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. You can also join us via Skype. Our Skype username is available to you. It is lrn.fm. Do send a contact request first. It will be approved, and then once you're approved, it'll be easy for you to reach out and get on the air via Skype, and you'll sound a lot better than the average phone call. So check us out at Skype username lrn.fm. Is what's going on in the Middle East an ISIS crisis or just more hype? Antiwar.com has the answers. Antiwar.com has the facts. Antiwar.com has the readership. What Antiwar.com doesn't have is a pot of gold. The war machine has the magic of the Federal Reserve's printing press and the mainstream media. All Antiwar.com has is, is you. Antiwar.com staff is down to a skeleton crew with minimal pay. They're committed to keeping the website up with the best of the worst of all the bad news. But they can't do it for free. They can't do it without you. They need your donation. Please go to Antiwar.com and donate or call them today. They proudly and gladly take Bitcoin. Antiwar.com slash donate because war is the health of the state. So, Johnny Ray, even though I agree with your you know, presumption that the police are going to mysteriously lose certain damning footage from their badge cameras that Mark is advocating that they have on every officer going from, uh, so in some cases, some departments have the, uh, the cameras that are mounted in their vehicles. Those aren't as effective as the badge camera, I, th I think, is getting a, an actual conversation between people, that kind of thing. Uh, so, yeah, there's a chance they could lose the footage, but there's also a good chance, you know, that they won't lose all the footage. Like every now and then, if they lose some of the footage, it certainly makes them look bad, right? Like they're supposed to have these cameras and then there's this allegation that a cop curb stomps a guy. And what do you know? The camera was malfunctioning during that time. That doesn't make the cops look good when that happens. And they wouldn't be able to get away with it 100% of the time uh, doing that. So that's why I think that what you're seeing is when they test these systems out, the use of force complaints against officers and by officers, because the officers will file reports uh, as well. If they, for instance, were attacked by somebody that they were trying to question or uh, you know, if the the person they're talking to tells a lie about what the officer did, if the if the person claims the officer hit them, so you know, and the officer didn't hit them, you know, then that that person may file a false report against the officer, and this would the camera would reveal that that was a false report. So the police, in a lot of cases, support having these cameras going too, and certainly if they're going to shut down the cameras when uh, something happens that the officer does but only keep them running when it's something that the you know the people that the officers are talking to does that will also look bad for them as well. So I think it's worth the effort to put into especially if the police you know if the police are in favor of it why not add the camera in? Why not have the extra camera there? You shouldn't count on it working, which is why you need to have your own camera. You need to have your own dash cam at the very minimum and and also add to that your own cell phone camera. Have you should have two cameras running if you can uh, if you can swing it. But the reason the reason the police should not have badge cams is because badge cams cost money. Okay. <laughs> and you have to steal that money first in order to give it to the police officer. Somebody decided to steal money to uh, give the police officer a paycheck in the first place. If you're going to pay somebody to do a particular job, uh, they should have. You should outfit them with the uh, the tools to allow them to do the job in the best way possible. How about this, Johnny Ray? We sell the police guns and use the proceeds from selling their pistols or whatever their machine guns. Use the proceeds to buy the cameras. 
Yeah, I I could definitely go along with that. <laughs> you need to get to sell their shoes too. Sell all the ammunition uh, while you're at it. I mean, they could definitely cover some camera systems if they sold all their guns. They but got there's a lot of there, guns. there's any number of improvements you could make to all the 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 police departments around the country. The only way to determine the only environment that can determine whether those improvements are actually improvements is to have a real free market in protection services. No doubt. Everything else is just your opinion. It's just your opinion and your opinion. The market can 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 have these opinions fight against each other and the the one that does the most and the best for the consumer always the wins, wins in the free market. Well, yeah, I mean you could make the argument that beta should have beaten VHS back in the 1980s, but uh you know VHS did did come out victorious and arguably it was not as good of a format as uh, as beta but the market does decide generally i think for the best uh over time and uh i'm with you man let's let's have market pol- market protection services but in the meantime between now and then um i'm not going in the to meantime, say no now to then cameras let's on not police. give any lip service to the idea that the police can be improved without changing their fundamental problem, which is the fact that they do not have to do anything for you in order to get your money. Well, that's a problem. Rialto, California installed these chest cams, these Mm -hmm. uh, police cams, and they had an 80 percent drop in complaints about use of force and a 66 percent drop. And excuse me, they had an 80 percent drop of um, complaints about police brutality and a 66 percent drop in uses of force. So that says to me that Two out of the three times cops were using force uh, that they were uh, not justified and that um, four out of the five people who complained about police brutality were full of crap. Yeah, uh, as far as I'm concerned, all of those numbers could be full of crap. They could be real, but they could; those effects could be temporary until the police department learns how to work around that particular little obstacle. Well, I think you probably what you have in Rialto is is a, a police chief who wanted to institute something like this, mm-hmm. and when you have that uh, motivated and passionate leader who, uh, you know, you're you're talking about a, uh, you know. You, it it often creates a situation where you know you've got this one guy who's really you know he's really going to push something through that really works when you sort of you know give a top down mandate it usually isn't as successful but I I do think it's going to be an improvement I just don't think that um, that it's ever going to be perfect. Well, Johnny Ray, look, uh, there are ways to make the government police better in their current form. Right now, we have the government monopoly. They are the only option. Sure, you can hire your own private protection services on top of them, I suppose. But uh, for the most part, the government monopolizes this particular task in society. And uh, they don't do a very good job with it because, as you pointed out, they are funding themselves immorally. Uh, They're using the threat of violence to guarantee a a budget for themselves next year, even if they're violent with people, even if they treat people poorly, even if they are insulting to people. I mean, that guy, you know, yeah, okay, he got arrested and everything, uh, but that's pretty rare that a police officer will receive that level of punishment for, you know, being rude to somebody and in this case slapping him ultimately. Um, In a lot of cases, cops get away with murder. And that's very frustrating. If, for instance, we didn't have a war on drugs, I think we'd have a friendlier police populace. If the police weren't trained to look at people as the enemy, uh, you know, separate themselves from the people that they're supposedly serving, then we'd have a friendlier uh, police officer. And there, there have, you know, been in the past, you know, fr- friendlier officers. I mean, there's certainly some of the old timers in the departments today. They're frustrated by some of the new blood, the, these young kids coming in and uh, just basically wanting to be badge heavies and throw their weight around and, and hurt people. So not all cops are, you know, vicious criminals and bad guys. Many of them think they're doing the right thing, even though you and I disagree uh, with how they're approaching things. I think bringing cameras to the situation brings some level of accountability that they don't have today. But again, you can't count on them to do it. You need to bring your own camera into the situation. It's Free Talk Live. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules regularly $34.95, now only $25. 
HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95 now. 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also Explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. I'm getting joined by Ellie Granderson. She's going to put a feminine scope on these lace kerchief star buggers and give us her lady opinion, Ellie. Hi, Joe. You know, it riles me up every time you walk in here, Ellie. <laughs> you set my blood to dancing with all your pillowy parts. <laughs> Oh, stop it, Joad. <laughs> now, now, give it to me, no fimble fimble, Lily. When we start dusting these rocket boys' lily white bottoms with baby puff? Uh, Joad, since the end of the Cold War, NASA has basically functioned as a giveaway to the American aerospace industry, wasting trillions of taxpayer dollars every year on extravagant programs with no tangible benefit. Finds a plum to look at, all the sense of a badger to boot. <laughs> Joad. Now, I've been thinking on, and I got these three little chickens pecking on my head while we'll save NASA some coin. <laughs> Man wants to go to space, can strap on a helmet, climb in the cannon, let the Chinese gunpowder carry him off among the stars. He'll come back now. Gonna skin a fox in one throat, and you're gonna fancy on it. This is the Onion News Network. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free. Bring up anything you want at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features waiting for you on the site. Once again, that's freetalklive.com. Those toll-free numbers brought to you by ProXPN. If you care about your online privacy, you really need to take a moment to look into ProXPN. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. You can download their free application for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices. Even Linux users can get set up with ProXPN, although the process is a little different for Linux users. Anyway, what they do is they encrypt your data connection, meaning your internet service provider will no longer be able to snoop on what you're doing. They're probably saving all of your surfing history right now, that is your ISP, maybe keeping that history for up to five years in some cases. 
You can stop that from happening by going and downloading the ProXPN software at proxpn.com slash FTL. And then when you're ready to upgrade with ProXPN, again, they've got a free account, but you can uh, get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access, you can privately torrent, and get past regionally blocked websites, all with their premium account. And you can get access to that by using code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live, and then 50, as in 50% off of the price of the annual account. That breaks the price down to about 5 bucks a month. And that's proxpn.com slash FTL. Plus, that code FTL50 gets you that savings for the lifetime of the account. So keep that in mind. Also, you can save more with code FTLBTC and pay in Bitcoin. You'll get 62% off the annual account price that way. And you get it all with a risk-free 7-day money-back guarantee. And ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use code FTL50 or FTLBTC and get a great discount on privacy. That is priceless. Let's go to your phone calls and thoughts here tonight, whether you want to comment on police abuse, recording the police, police cameras. Those are the places we've gone thus far. Plus, it's Veterans Day. Uh, we'll come back around to that topic in a moment. But first, Bobby is in Lakeland. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Bobby. Yeah, I was just, I had the cops were just knocking on my door. I'm at a motel, and the cops have been knocking on my door, and they just stopped, and they're outside now. And I don't know what I should do. I have been, I've been smoking a little bit of pot, but, I mean, I haven't been noisy or nothing. And uh, I don't know I don't know um, if they can come and get, they can accuse in my room. I don't know what I should do because right now I'm just kind of stay down in the bathroom. And I don't know if I should answer or if I should go out. If I should just not, not, not answer or, or, or what I should do. Well, okay. I'm not a lawyer. I have so. no clue. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I've got some ideas. I'm not an attorney. Um, I, you know, this is not legal advice. But generally, I wouldn't recommend answering the door for the police. I mean, it's generally a bad idea. It's certainly gotten me into trouble uh, in the past. And uh, if you answer the door for the police, then there's a good chance they're going to push their way inside and uh, and or claim to smell marijuana. If you have indeed been smoking cannabis in the room, if the door is open, they'll have a much larger legitimacy to claim. They could claim they smell the pot anyway and then use that as their excuse to come into the room by force. But if they're knocking on the door that probably means they don't have any probable cause to actually come into the room by force. Uh, they don't have a warrant. They want you to come and chat with them so they can then talk you into some sort of a criminal charge, uh, come up with some evidence against you. And so you open the door up. They're going to be able to peek in. They might see the bong sitting out, you know, whatever it is. They're, the more evidence they can garner they can garner against you, the worse off you're going to be. So the best thing you can do, in my opinion, and it's not a legal one, is to ignore them. And not I don't talk see to that them. you have any obligation to answer the door. Um, I mean, you some, do not. Yeah, somebody knocking on a door that doesn't obligate you to answer it. They can shout, but you don't have to talk to them. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, Barry Cooper's advice was always to what he did was he would talk to them th through the door and say, if you have a warrant, go ahead and bust the door down. Mm. But I suppose in this case, they would, if they had a warrant, they would simply go they would be able to get a key so they don't need to bust the door down and you don't need to tell them that. I would just sit tight. Yeah, that's probably the best thing to do. If you also have some sort of recording device, it would be a good idea to have that handy and or already be recording so that way you can catch anything that uh, that is said or yelled uh, through the door. And Bobby, anything else uh, you want to share tonight? No, no, that's not that's, that's how working. I'll, I'll, I'll call you guys and let's see what happens. I'm just going to stay low right here in the bathroom. All right. Good luck, man. Good luck. I don't know if it's a true story, but if it is, <laughs> it was well done. It, uh, you know, it's it, that's what you want to consider. And whether it's your hotel room or whether it's your home, uh, if it's or an RV, that can technically be considered your home. Uh, if you are in your home, then you've got greater protections. It's not the same as if you are driving somewhere. If you're driving somewhere, then uh, they still have to get permission to search if they don't have probable cause. But you're in in a much greater danger if you're just a driver because as a driver, uh, they can demand that you identify yourself. You do have to interact with them to that extent, typically in most places. Again, I'm not a lawyer. This is you're legal on their advice. road at that point. Yeah, this isn't legal advice. You've essentially consented to interacting with them at the bare minimum by handing them your driver's license. You don't have to speak to them. I'd like to make that clear. If you're on the road. Uh, and they demand your license and registration or license, registration, and insurance, depending on which state you're in, then you've no obligation to acknowledge them with words, but you do generally have the obligation, as I understand it, to hand those things to the officer. You can just keep your lips zipped 
and quietly hand those things to the officer. You don't even have to make eye contact with them if you don't want to. Um, but if you're in your home, whether it's your your apartment, your home, somebody else's home, uh, there's really nothing you can benefit. There's no there's no there's not much you can gain from answering the door for the police unless you've called them there, unless you're the one who invited them there for some reason, which also is a very dangerous thing to do. Because, again, you never know which officers are going to be dispatched. You don't know if they're going to be psychopath nut jobs who are going to attack you physically or ultimately arrest you, even though you thought they were going to arrest somebody else at the at the residence. So you got to use caution. These guys are very, very dangerous. And many of them are Potentially. not. Yeah, many of them are not there to help you out. You know, if they're, if they're banging on your hotel room door, they're probably not there to make your acquaintance and have, uh, you know, invite you out to coffee. Not that you'd want to do that anyway, because then they'd probably just be trying to gather information about you. Almost every time you're talking to the police... It's their job to put people in jail. Right. Almost every time you're talking to the police, you should presume they are conducting an investigation about you. And you can ask them, officer, are you conducting an investigation? Now, they don't necessarily have to tell you the truth when they answer your questions, because they can legally lie to you, but uh, in many places, you can't legally lie to them. So better to put yourself, better to not put yourself into a position in which you might be tempted to lie to a police officer. Right. So this guy who's uh, hiding in his hotel room, uh, in in the bathroom, you know, maybe this is true, maybe it's not. But I don't think that I, I, unless they, I, right? I mean, what can they do to compel you to answer the door? I don't think they have any. The, you're legally compelled to answer the door in under any circumstances. I don't believe you are either. Again, please correct me if you think we're wrong about this. We're not legal experts, but uh, yeah, I mean, whether it's you're having a party, a college or high school party, or just you know an adult party or whatever, um, the, the the real problem can be other people answering the door who don't know their rights. So he's alone in a hotel room. He can control himself. But if he were there with a friend who doesn't know about the police and they're intimidated by the police and they're afraid of what might happen if they don't answer the door because the police are out there yelling and they're demanding that you open it up because they can yell whatever the hell they want to at you. They can try to intimidate you into opening the door. Absolutely. So if you're there with somebody who doesn't have the sort of legal chops to deal with the police in that way, that can make things difficult. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, because if they crack and they go and they answer the door, they can let the cops in. And it doesn't matter if, let's say, it's your home or uh, doesn't end as, I, as, as I understand it. So correct me if I'm wrong about this. If you're in your hotel room, you're the one who's rented the room, you're the one with the key, doesn't matter. Your friend can go and open that door and let those cops in if your friend is there and, you know, and you're not. Now, if you're there and your friend's there and then the, cop, the friend opens the door and you say, get out of here, that would present an interesting legal situation. I suspect the cops would legally be able to search if they were allowed if, or to come in if one participant in the home allows them inside. I believe that is the case. That one I'm a little murky on. I think if you're there and you're the name on the lease, as it were, that mm-hmm. you still have controlling interest and you might be able to tell them to go away, but I don't know. Maybe. You're stepping into some uh, what I would call murky uh, legal territory in that particular case. So better to have all of your... Uh, associates and your friends on the same page about how to deal with the police. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live and bring up whatever's on your mind. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Are you predictable? When was the last time you surprised someone with something totally unexpected? At ProFlowers, we think predictability is boring. So we're making it easy for you to be unpredictable by offering our best-selling 100 colorful blooms for just $19.99. Plus, we're giving away a free glass vase with every order. But hurry, because this incredible deal ends this Friday. Go to ProFlowers.com, click on the blue radio microphone in the upper right corner, and enter the secret code 0700. That's ProFlowers.com, secret code 0700. 
This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices a 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a mm. license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. And, of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come you see, to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business. But Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nesquik. Try Nesquik 4-Packs, perfect for lunches and great for kids on the go. Look for it in the juice aisle. Snack time is a great chance to sneak extra calcium into your child's diet without making him feel like he's eating something he doesn't want. Serve up dairy-rich foods like smoothies, flavored milk, frozen yogurt, and string cheese. He'll love the treat, and you'll love knowing how good it is for him. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, you've got Ian. Johnny Ray. And Mark. And don't forget, you can join us online. Drop by freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features on the site. If you like what we're doing, then you can support Free Talk Live by shopping with us. You go to shop.freetalklive.com. Enter Amazon through the links you'll find there. There's Amazon UK, Amazon Canada, and Amazon US. You just go and get your shopping taken care of. It's the same great Amazon experience that you're used to. Free Talk Live just gets a cut when you enter through our affiliate links there at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. We've been talking about Officer Glanz. Yes, that's actually his last name, G-L-A-N-S. He's been a law enforcement officer for almost three decades and now he is no longer a law enforcement officer, which is a fairly rare thing to see a police officer get fired. Uh, the sheriff in Saratoga County, New York, issued this press release yesterday, actually. I'm going to give you an excerpt from it here. They uh, had gotten the video that shows Officer Glanz allegedly hitting a young man that he was uh, accosting, <laughs> verbally accosting, and then uh, physically attacking on a uh, traffic stop. The young man apparently had a rifle, allegedly, in the back seat of his car. and Which is strange stuff in the state of New York that that's not a problem. Yeah, somehow. I'm interested in hearing from somebody who's in New York because I've, it's my, always been my understanding that New York has some terrible gun laws. 
Um, it would seem to me that having a rifle in New York is usually cost for, for a search, but maybe I'm wrong about that. I mean, I must be wrong about that. Maybe having a rifle is legal in your car, but not a handgun? I'm just, get, I'm just you know, grasping at straws here. I mean, because New You've York You've got to be able to transport your rifle somehow, yeah, right? Yeah, well, we're right. So... Anyway, it was in the middle of this conversation that the uh, the man, Officer Glanz, threatens and then attacks uh, the young man and ultimately threatens to S down his neck. Because that's the kind of quality officer that he is. Now, of course, being embarrassed by having this recorded, uh, Sheriff Zurlo, Michael Zurlo, has spoken out in the form of a press release saying they immediately launched a thorough investigation upon being notified of this video evidence. They worked through the weekend and conducted multiple interviews with all parties involved. As a result, criminal charges have been filed against officer or former officer Sean R. Glanz for the following. Official misconduct, a Class A misdemeanor, harassment, second degree, violation. Mr. Glanz, accompanied by his attorney, was arraigned uh, already on this and has been released on his own recognizance to appear at a later date. According to Sheriff Zerlo, quote, the actions of Sheriff Glanz, or Sergeant Glanz rather, both as a police officer and a supervisor was completely inappropriate and unwarranted and not condoned in any fashion by the Saratoga County Sheriff's Office. His actions serve no purpose in the furtherance of the investigation that he was conducting and have greatly undermined the public trust of this agency. His actions in this incident are not a reflection of the quality professional service provided by other members of the Sheriff's Office on a daily basis. I wish to thank the members of the community who brought this men, uh, matter to light and who participated openly and honestly in the investigation. Further, Sean R. Glanz is no longer employed by the Saratoga County Sheriff's Office or the County of Saratoga, having tendered his resignation. So he actually wasn't fired. He He's quit. asked to resign. Yeah. Uh, prior to a statutorily required suspension slash termination hearing. So rather than go through the termination hearing, he decided to resign. And, and get a job with the police department somewhere else in New York State. Well, now that's a cynical thing to say, Johnny Ray, but it's uh, based on evidence. There's a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot, lot of, of evidence that bad cops who actually do lose their jobs in some departments will end up hired elsewhere. And a lot of times the word doesn't get around, you know, the, until much later that oh crap, this officer's got a history of abusing people in a different part of the state. That's not uncommon. So you may be right in your prediction. And I would like to add that this outcome has very little to do with the black and white of the law and whatever misdemeanors Officer Glanz may have committed and has everything to do with the personalities of the people involved and the relationship between Officer Glanz, uh, Sergeant Glanz, and the sheriff. If they were really, if, if those relations were really good and the, the two, the, and Glanz fit in really well and, and was well liked. That it covered for him. They'd have covered for him. This is a pretty bad video, though, Johnny Ray. I mean, this is a hard one to just blow off. It's pretty clear this cop slaps the dude in the video. Had the cop just been mouthing off, they would probably be able to get away with saying, well, we've given him a... We've given him a stern finger shucking and told him he's been a naughty boy. Uh, they probably could get away with like an internal punishment if he were just mouthy to the guy. But because he actually hits this man, he he slaps the guy. That is, I think, you know, that they got caught red handed and they had to do something more. Now, ultimately, the cop's probably going to take a plea deal, and he won't likely have to sit any time in jail on this. So the, the actual punishment will probably be much less than what people are hoping for in this particular case. So they'll kind of cover for him that way in that if you and I, of course, were to slap a cop, we'd be hit with felony charges of assaulting a police officer. So obviously there's still that differential, you know, that uh, double standard where uh, the police are treated better than the average person. That, that I think, will be on display and already is on display in this particular case. But I don't think they could have avoided I don't think they would have been able to get away with, like, a paid vacation for this guy during an investigation. Well, let me put it another way. The, the, the actions of the sheriff's department are serving the sheriff's department and the purpose sure. the purpose of of expelling off uh, sergeant glands is PR. is for the benefit of the sheriff's department it's Absolutely. not it's not at all to help the the people of Saratoga County their interests are their secondary they're incidental to anything else that might happen it's just that they'll be the the sheriff's office will be able to save a little face and 
do their business a little easier by getting rid of glands, but it's not really because they're trying to serve the people oh, of Saratoga County. Yeah, I, I think that's totally the case. Yeah, Milton Friedman, I watched a video from him, I think it was yesterday, basically talking about how the, the system's salvageable because you can get the right, you don't have to have the right politicians, you just have to put enough outward pressure on them. And I think that's what you're sort of speaking to here, uh, Johnny Reyes, is that this was from outward pressure, it's not from... Yeah, it's CYA. Yeah. This is them, you know, covering their butts. This is them trying to regain whatever respect they had in the community, which of course has been flail, you know, has been losing over time. They, uh, they've been... The more they do, the more they arrest peaceful people, the more they arrest people for open containers and uh, and other, you know, drugs and things like that, that don't have a victim, these so-called crimes with no victim, the more they destroy their reputation with people. And so this is just a def- desperate PR attempt. There's no doubt about that. But having cameras is what made this possible. This uh, The young man who recorded his friend in this case, if it weren't for him... This officer would still be on duty. In fact, I bet you, if you pulled up this officer's file, if I were in Saratoga, New York, I would want to go and pull this officer's file and find out how many uh, complaints had been issued against this particular officer. Because I guarantee you, he's got a history of people complaining against him, but no video of any of those uh, incidents happening. And so, therefore, he had been getting covered for for years, likely. This guy was on the force for 30 years. I'm sure this wasn't the first time that he used a little bit of extra force that wasn't necessary and mouthed off to somebody. It's just the first time it got caught. You're just assuming he's a D-head because his last name is last plans. name. Yeah. Oh, it's not an assumption, Mark. I mean, it's, you know, you don't get to be... In, an, in this position for that long, and that's your first night where you treat somebody like that. That's just not, that's just not how people are. You know, this guy has an attitude, and when he was talked to by the Times Union, he admitted he'd do the same thing over again. He wasn't even repentant for what he did. To him, that's part of his job is to treat, you know, twenty somethings with total disrespect and threaten to S down their necks. There's there's a certain level of evidence for that position that yeah. that is their job. So you can share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I've been on uh, RT a couple of times talking about this cameras issue with police having cameras and, you know, sort of being there as uh, as a part of copblock.org as that was the reason I was invited on uh, to the show. And the point that I think is the most important point to make is that people, even if you get the police department where you uh, where they get these cameras, like because some police departments are in favor of these because it does help protect the police against lies by the people they're you know trying to arrest. Um, if you get this in your area, don't get all complacent because what Johnny Ray said earlier can be true, where their their footage mysteriously disappears. Um, so you've got to have your own cameras. You can't just uh, you know figure the police have it covered. You've got to have your own dash cam. And there, there's no reason not to. They're affordable. If the dash cam is going on your dash and you've got a cell phone camera going at the same time, then if one you know if one of your cameras gets smashed, the other one would maybe have recorded that. I've got one on my car, freedomcam.net. Plus the dash cam will also protect you in an accident situation because you'll have evidence for what happened before the crash and what happened during the crash, things like that. There's so many reasons to have a camera with you and on you and on at all times in your vehicle. 855-450 free. More about Veterans Day coming up next. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. If Americans continue their reckless disregard of the U.S. Constitution, our freedoms and way of life may not continue. Original Intent, Spoiler, and Molan La Bay is a three-movie special that explains what we can do. From the director of Fiat Empire, this trio of movies features Ron Paul, Pat Buchanan, Edwin Vieira, and many others. On sale now at moviepubs.net. This is a mini library you don't want to be without. 
Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, November 11, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,166, silver $15.61, and Bitcoin's trading around $370. Today's precious metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. The Liberty Beat is made possible in part by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food eFoods Direct is offering 10% off to all Liberty Beat listeners. Just go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat for your savings today. In the news, on Monday, President Obama issued a statement and a YouTube video explaining his support for net neutrality and an open internet. And that's why I'm urging the Federal Communications Commission to do everything they can to protect net neutrality for everyone. They should make it clear that whether you use a computer, phone, or tablet, internet providers have a legal obligation not to block or limit your access to a website. The president's comments were released as demonstrators rallied outside the home of Federal Communications Commission Chairman Tom Wheeler. The Nation reports that the Ping May, an international cargo ship owned by James Chow, father-in-law to U.S. Senator Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, was stopped leaving Columbia in passage to the Netherlands. Colombian Coast Guard agents searched the boat and seized approximately 90 pounds of cocaine. Chow, an immigrant from Taiwan, successful in shipping, has donated an estimated 5 to $25 million to Senator McConnell's campaigns since the late 1980s, according to Daily Kos. On Friday, the U.S. Department of Agriculture approved a genetically engineered potato for commercial planting in the United States. The innate potato was developed by the J.R. Simplot Company as an effort to reduce the level of a suspected carcinogen that appears when frying a potato. Following field trials in 2009 through 2011, the potato has now been approved by the USDA, the Environmental Protection Agency, and the Food and Drug Administration. The Simplot Company is one of the suppliers of frozen french fries for McDonald's. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beep when shopping on Amazon.com? Well, you can. Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at libertybeat.com slash Amazon. This edition of Liberty Beat, sponsored by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, November 11th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. A family of four will embark on a three-week Bitcoin-only road trip over the Thanksgiving holiday. Expenses such as food, gasoline, and lodging will all be paid for with the cryptocurrency as they journey from Texas to California, Nevada, Colorado, and Missouri. Our goal with the Unconventional West Coast Tour is to inspire the Bitcoin community to spend their Bitcoin on food, gasoline, and lodging. This is the second Bitcoin-only road trip for the Blush family this year. Last June, Catherine, her husband John Bush, and their two children traveled over 4,400 miles from Texas to Washington, D.C., New York, New Hampshire, and Ohio, spending Bitcoin only, with the exception of several toll roads that they encountered along the way. A few things have changed since that last time out. We'll talk about that tomorrow. 
You can follow their journey at uncoinventional.com. The summary of a report on CIA torture methods may finally be released this week, following months of delays. According to a report by Vice News, the report will state that interrogators could have obtained intelligence details regarding terror plots without the use of torture, also known as enhanced interrogation techniques. The public will see less than 10% of the 6,000-page, $40 million report when it is finally declassified. Vice reports the summary does not draw any conclusions as to why the CIA decided to pursue torture techniques after 9-11. The report also apparently fails to make any recommendation for the CIA. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud. Detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Jessica Armand would like to thank Liberty Beat listeners for all their support. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, November 11th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. People are saying it could be a baby bump. Our senior celebrity correspondent, Tyler, is here. Tyler, you always have the inside dish. What's the deal? She looks like she got fat, so she might have a baby in her tummy. Oh, what else have you heard? I heard she has a boyfriend and they have sex. That's right. You know, the Hollywood couple vacationed in Rome together just two months ago. They had a big hotel room, and I can tell you what they did in it. Spill it, Tyler. He put his penis in her vagina. Hot. She is one lucky gal. And she's going crazy. Uh-oh, is stardom starting to wear on Emma? Yeah, she's crazy and dumb. She put a carrot in her vagina. Whoa, do tell. Yeah, she said, oh, this carrot's like my boyfriend's penis. I'm gonna rub it all over my vagina. I'm so gross. Then she ate it like Bugs Bunny. What a hot mess. Hey, Emma, get it together, girl. Tyler, you are breaking news as always. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio, you've got Ian here. Johnny Ray. And Mark. And you can join us on Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. We continue here. You can bring up anything. Mark, you had started commenting earlier in the show tonight about Veterans Day. Uh, we can continue that discussion because we ended up talking about some naughty police. One officer in particular in uh, Saratoga, New York, for uh, slapping a man that wasn't consenting to search his car. Uh, so that was the bulk of the show thus far. You can certainly comment. We've talked about uh, police cameras, the proposal to put cameras on individual officers. And there was some disagreement within the studio tonight on whether or not that was a good idea. Uh, so anything you want to discuss here, 855-450-FREE. We've got Tom in Detroit. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Tom. Hey, guys. How are you? Hey, what's on your mind? In a while. Go ahead, sir. Uh, well, I was listening to uh, the gentleman who called in that was kind of hiding because the cops were pounding on his door. <laughs> and uh, I've had two <laughs> firsthand experiences with that. Uh, one of them you guys are familiar with back in March. Uh, the cops were beating on my door at 1230 at night, and I didn't answer, and they ended up surrounding my house and floodlights out for about an hour and a half, had their guns out, sh shotguns, rifles, and I never answered. I never, never made any attempt to argue with them or speak to them at all, and they packed their stuff and went home. Mm. And that's just one example. I've got another example also where uh, they came to the house, and uh, this was another house I was at at my girlfriend's, and they were heading up to the I, – I saw them heading up to the uh, to us, and I just – I told her, go in the house. I just made it in, shut the door, and they were already grabbing the door, and I had just throw, you know shut the lock, turned the lock, and they were beating on the door, demanding we come out. We just didn't answer, didn't speak, don't argue, don't entice them, and they went away. Excellent. So – they don't have you don't have to answer the door, and they will eventually go away unless I mean there's no guarantee. Obviously, unless you get a real psychopath, but uh, yeah, it's in true. general, they can't do anything. Yeah, you yeah. never know if you're going to be dealing with a rogue cop. In which case, then having some sort of video device uh, recording said rogue cop is probably the best thing that you can do to respond. Earlier callers were suggesting using violence against police who would use violence against you, and I think that's the terrible idea, and it's probably one of the worst plans you could possibly uh, utilize in that situation. Tom, thanks for sharing your story tonight. Appreciate it as always. The toll-free number. 
number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So whether it's uh, talking about the bad police and how to deal with them or rather to successfully not deal with them at all in the case of not answering the door, you're welcome to comment, share your experiences. Mark, uh, Veterans Day, uh, formerly known as Armistice Day to celebrate the end of World War One. Is that right? Yeah. Um, that changed at some point. I'm not sure when uh, that, that changed over. Do you happen to know? You know, I don't know when it changed over. Probably yeah. uh, shortly after World War II. And, yeah, probably. You know, but when, when the wars start piling up. So the purpose uh, changed from celebrating the end of a war to just sort of yet another day on which Americans can parade out their... Uh, their nationalism and wave their flags around and feel good about themselves, uh, feel good about these men who and women who have essentially been nothing more than government pawns. Uh, they've been at the beck and call of politicians over many uh, all these decades and have ultimately done nothing to advance human freedom, which, of course, is what they're told that they're actually doing as soldiers, but have actually just advanced the cause of the oil companies and other mega corporations, military manufacturers. And that Who's ever paying the politicians, uh, yeah. you know, whatever they're, it's obvious, it's obvious the soldiers do what the politicians say. Um, that much is clear. And, you know, I mean, I think a lot of, a lot of people figure it out when they're in the military or after they get out of the military. That they've been turned into tools for the politicians? Yep, and some people never figure it out. Um, they they like the attention they get. They like the thank you for your service and that kind of thing. And there's those old guys that wear those military hats constantly with, like, the ship that they were on or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, it is what it is, right? It's I, their identity. I often wonder what the ratio between combat veterans and, you know, those that uh, like the attention – Right. Like I, I would think a combat veteran would not want to be thanked. Hmm. I would think that they'd like like I just you, I was sitting here not thinking about my legs being blown off. And you reminded me. Thanks so much. Right. Really appreciate that. Um, or, or whatever. I don't know precisely, but um, it you know, it's a tough situation. Anyway, this is a, an interesting story here about young people uh, signing up for World War One. Can I interrupt you, Mark? Armistice Day was changed to Veterans Day in 1954. Okay, there you Excellent. go, shortly after uh, uh, World War One. In World 1945, II, World War II veteran Raymond Weeks from Birmingham, Alabama, had the idea to expand Armistice Day to celebrate all veterans. U.S. Representative Ed Rees from Emporia, Kansas, presented a bill establishing the holiday through Congress. President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed the bill into law on May 26, 1954. There you go. So this is from BBC.com. Teenage soldiers of World War I, as many as a quarter million boys under the age of 18 served in the British Army during World War I. Fergal Keane remembers the sacrifice they made. Now, I don't like calling somebody who's under the age of 18, or 19 in this case, um, but uh, under the age of 18 uh, a boy, mm -hmm. but I think they're responsible for their actions, but I think it's... Uh, uh, I I think that uh, they're a product of their times to some extent. You know, it's boring on the farm. They're not making very much money. Prospects don't look very good. Let's go off to war. The most horrifying, World War One, the most horrifying event um, up till that in history. Some find that, uh, excuse me, war confers many things on boys who pick up a weapon to fight. They learn the future meaning of, uh, the true meaning of fear. They test their own capacity for courage and the limits of human endurance physical, and mental. Some find that killing comes easily to them, too easily. Others recoil at the acts of blood and death. What unites all teenage warriors is the speed with which they are hurled into a place of maiming and death. Describing the training of a boy soldier in World War I, Wilfred Owen wrote in Arms and the Boy. Um, it's kind of a weird poem. Book called, or it's a poem? Well, th this part is very poetic. Okay. Um, it's very odd. It's called Arms and the Boy? Yeah. Gotcha. Um, it, it's, uh, let the boy try along his bay bayonet blade, how long, how cold steel is and keen with hunger of blood, blue with all malice like a madman's flesh and thinly drawn with famishing for, famishing for flesh. Lend him to stroke these blind, blunt bullet heads, which long to nuzzle in the hearts of lads or... Give him cartridges of fine zinc teeth, 
sharp with sharp, sharp with the sharpness of grief and grief and death. And from Homer's Iliad to the present day, the stories of boy soldiers evoke a particular sadness, resonant as they are with the destruction of youth and possibility. But as the outbreak of the Great War, there was nothing to suggest that the tens of thousands of boy volunteers were about to join a longed, doomed pro- profession. Excuse me, procession. Now, this is an article about what uh, what it's like to be a boy soldier, especially in World War One. There were a uh, quarter million teenagers uh, would join the call to fight. The motives varied and often overlapped. Many were gripped by patriotic fervor. Do you remember the whole White Feather Society? The White Rose? No, no. The White. Fe- um, you, you'll have to look it up whether society is the right term. Okay. But what used to happen in World War One is the women would go around with uh, chicken feathers, white hmm. chicken feathers, and hand them essentially to every young, able-bodied male and say, if, effectively saying, you're a chicken if you don't go fight. Oh, my. And this was on both sides from what I understand, but certainly I'd heard it originally on the German side, uh, specifically about a young man who had gone and fought. And then when he got back home, a girl did this to him, and he went and fought again. Jeez. And died, of course. Mm. You know, caught a bullet for the Kaiser. Mm. Anyway, uh, typically the boys had to be 19 to fight, but the the law did not prevent 14-year-olds and upwards from joining in droves. They responded to the Army's desperate need for troops, and recruiting sergeants were often less than scrupulous. It was obvious they weren't 19, says historian Richard Van Emden, but you have a queue of men going down the road and you're getting a bounty for everyone that joins up. Are you really going to argue with uh, argue the toss with a young lad who's enthusiastic, who's keen as mustard to go, who looks maybe pretty fit, pretty well? Let's take him. Toll free number tonight, 855-450 free. They apparently were the white feather girls uh, who shamed young men into enlisting. 855-450 free. More coming up here on Free Talk Live. Veterans Day will continue. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-856-4195. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-856-4195. That's 1-800-856-4195. Call 1-800-856-4195. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and weed, the road to freedom. 
a film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited here to dial in toll-free to bring up whatever you want, 855-450-FREE. News about the Silk Road 2.0 takedown and it's not good news for Blake Benthal, the man alleged to have been running the site, the underground drug marketplace. We can give you more information about that here in a little bit. Uh, the toll-free number for you is 855-450-FREE. We're talking about Veterans Day, and we'll continue that discussion here in a moment, but also want to let you know how to get gold and silver if you've been thinking about protecting yourself against Inflation, gold and silver historically has done a very good job of that. Now, obviously, past performance is not ind indicative of future success. But that said, gold and silver has been around for a long time, and uh, you know the charts don't lie. So go and grab yourself some over at gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com from Midas Resources. They are the company that's behind the syndicate that we're on, the folks who help us get on over 150 radio stations from coast to coast. Uh, they are backed up by Midas Resources. And so, therefore, when you buy gold and silver from gold.freetalklive.com, it actually directly helps Free Talk Live and also indirectly helps Free Talk Live by helping support Midas Resources and our syndicate GCN. So you can call them if you, uh, for instance, don't want to go online. You can just call them up at 877-857-9938. That's toll-free, 877-857-9938. Or go to gold.freetalklive.com and grab your gold and silver pieces there. So our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Mark, you're sharing with us uh, sort of a, a story about uh, some guys, some young young males that were involved in World War One. Is that right? Yeah, I think this is a pretty interesting article. And um, here they're going on and talking about 15-year-old Cyril. And I don't know how to uh, These say— These are Europeans, right? This is uh, basically about English. It's from okay. the BBC. I don't know how to say this last name. I'm going to say Joe's, but it's spelled like Jose. Okay. But, you know, this is 19— 15 in England. I'm suspecting this isn't the last Cyril's last name is not Jose. All right. Um, and there's not one of those little things over the uh, accents. Uh, Tilde? Maybe. Let's Accent. See. Okay. Cyril Joes was a tin miner's son from Cromwell, Cornwall. Uh, with the region suffering uh, heavy unemployment, the boy with a strong sense of adventure joined up from his training camp. He wrote an excited letter to his sister. Dearest Ivy, stand back. I've got my own rifle and bayonet. The bayonet's about two feet long from hilt to end of point. Must feel a bit rummy to run one, run into one of them in a charge. Not arf. I don't know what that means. Uh, goodbye and God bless you. From your fit brother, Cyril. Cyril survived the war, but bloodshed he witnessed in France turned him into a vehement opponent of militarism mm. for the rest of his life. After being wounded in the battlefield, it took Cyril two days to crawl back to British lines. Can you imagine crawling hand over hand through no man's land to try to get back to your troops, to, to your friends? Two days? Uh, it's hard to imagine. That. It is hard to imagine. I, I'm just, just a, I can just glimpse in my mind what it must have been like. Some of those battlefields had 
had bodies sure. festering for months. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine how many bodies he crawled over to get to them. Now, I'm just guessing he's going from no man's land to get back to where he was. Maybe you know, maybe he's in some nice uh, pasture that he could just uh, <laughs> wander through. I have no idea. But uh, they do say crawl, and that means that, to me that he probably wasn't in very good shape. Mm. In a letter home, he poured scorn on the British commander, feared Field Marshal Earl Haig. What brains Earl Douglas must have made me laugh when I read this dispatch. I attacked old women in that's that's in quotes. So Haig must have said that old women in England picturing Sir Doug in front of the British waves, brandishing a sword <laughs> at Johnny in the trenches. Attack Johnny from a hundred miles back. I'll get a job like that. So in what the he's next pointing war. out is this general character. Made made it sound in his statement as though he was the one attacking, when in point of fact, it's the troops, the people who's commanding uh, to lose their lives who are the ones who were attacking. Yeah, I think it's interesting the sort of the expectation that people have of uh, commanding officers. You don't want a general to leave from the front. Um, I mean... It's it doesn't in modern warfare generals don't lead from yeah, the front. Yeah, but his critique is valid. I mean, yeah. this guy's claiming he attacked. He didn't attack. His his troops attacked. I gave the order to attack. Yeah, I suppose, be more accurate. Anyway, I, I you know, I, mean, I think it's an easy shot. Doesn't make much sense. I think the problem was with the war, not with the uh, the general statement. <laughs> uh, regardless, that's my opinion. Recruitment offers officers were paid two shillings and six pence, about six pounds. Uh, that's to, in today's money for each new recruit and would often ignore any concerns they had about age. Many people at the start of the 20th century didn't have birth certificates, so it was easy to lie about how old you were. The minimum height requirement was five foot three with a minimum chest size of 34 inches. If you met that criteria, you were likely to be recruited. Some young boys were scared of being called a coward and could not resist the pressure from society. Hmm. The patriotic imperative at the outbreak of the war was not confined to British-born boys. For the children of migrants, rallying to the flag was proof of their loyalty to the country. A.B. Bevenstein was born in Russia-occupied Poland in 1898 and came to London when he was three. In September 1914, A.B. volunteered, changing his surname to the English Harris. Soon after his arrival in France, A.B. discovered the wretched nature of trench warfare. He wrote home, Dear Mother, I've been in the trenches four times and come out safe. We're down the trenches for six days and then we want to get relieved for six days rest. Dear Mother, I do not like the trenches. We're going in again this week. Oh, boy. For A.B. and many like him, the trenches meant cold and mud, wet clothes and rats, the smell of death. The sight of mutilated flesh, long, monotonous hours, interrupted by terror. On the 19th of December, 1915, A.B. was caught in a German mine explosion. The enemy had tunneled under the trench where he was stationed, and he was wounded and suffered. Because they did this. They'd tunnel underneath and then blow it up and then blow up the lines in the process. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was, uh, Germans were better at it than um, than the Allies, but you know. Either way, either way, it was done by both. What was simply called a he was he was wounded and suffered what was simply called shock. In today's military lexicon, it would be described as combat fatigue or post traumatic stress disorder. By early spring, AB was back at the front. Jeez, just a couple few months. In 12 February 1916, that's not even early spring. Good lord, what are we talking about? Later that uh, <laughs> later that winter, he's back at the front. By um, on the 12th of February, 1916, this, is, this had happened in December, uh, you know, the late December. So this is mid-February. Mm. He was atta- again attacked his position, this time with grenades. Suffering from shock, mm. A.B. wandered around back and forth along the British lines. He was eventually arrested and charged with desertion. He uh, was his later um, his letter home is that of a boy who seems determined to underplay his situation, not to put stress on his on his mother at home. Dear Mother, I'm not in the trenches, and I was ill, so I went out. They took me to prison, and I'm in a bit of trouble now. Right. Thanks, uh, thanks, guys. Uh, you, you know, went up, went ahead and stood up for his country, signed up, you know, underage, etc., that kind of thing, and uh, and then ultimately was rewarded with uh, a couple of attacks by the enemy and then an arrest by his own people. The following month, A.B., age 17, became one of the 306 British soldiers executed during the Great War. Wow, by the... The Brits. Yes. Yeah. He signed up. He volunteered. He couldn't handle it. His mind broke. And they shot him in the face. Because this is what civilized people do. 
Toll free number is 855 450 free. You're welcome to share your thoughts here on Veterans Day. 855 450 3733. Plenty of time for you with your thoughts. You can bring up anything you want as well here on Free Talk Live. There's more coming up. Hi, I'm Sam Nussbaum, WellPoint's Chief Medical Officer. We proudly support the March of Dimes mission to improve the health of babies and fight premature birth. We're helping the March of Dimes fund breakthroughs in research and community programs that help more moms have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Join us in working together to provide children with a healthier start in life. Visit marchofdimes.org. We love that you're passionate about GCN. And whether you're a listener, a business owner, or a radio industry professional, we've redesigned the new GCN newsletter to keep you in the know. Get updates on your favorite GCN shows and hosts. Go to GCNlive.com and click on the banner in the upper left corner. Just for signing up, you're automatically entered for monthly giveaways. Start receiving your newsletter today. The future of talk radio. GCN. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Thanks to Bitcoin, LRN.FM is able to provide our free-to-air satellite channel across North and Central America. You can listen to LRN.FM 24-7 via satellite for no monthly cost. Learn more about our satellite channel at sat.lrn.fm. And if you'd like to help us continue to expand, you can send us Bitcoins via the address you'll find under the Bitcoin graphic in the right column of LRN.FM. To learn more about Bitcoin, visit weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring signs into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you and I. Wait a minute. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free and bring up anything you want at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And join us online at freetalklive.com. If you're looking to start a business... Here's a word to the wise. Incorporate at LegalZoom.com. Incorporation can help protect you against frivolous lawsuits that could wipe you out. 
LegalZoom.com is fast and easy. They do all kinds of legal documents there, not just in corporations. They do patents, wills, trademarks, LLCs. Use coupon code FTL to save $10 off your order. It's LegalZoom.com. That's LegalZoom.com. Let's Coupon code FTL. go to your phone calls and thoughts. Coming up, Mark, you've got one more story of uh, some young men who were involved in World War I and kind of just telling their stories and their experiences. We'll continue with the third of three here in moments. We've got James. He's on the line in Arizona via Skype. James, you're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't know what's more stupid and insulting is hearing Pistol Pete speak of Westboro Baptist Church fondly. We're hearing some dope head speak of uh, if only the Jews had engaged in non-cooperation with the Nazis, who, by the way, traveled in packs like wolves and they were heavily armed. And any Jew that did not do what they said. Hello? Hello? I think he's having some internet difficulties. There is the uh, Skype is, in, is reporting an internet connection problem. I'm uh, going to presume that he was suggesting that uh, if, the Jew, if the Jews <laughs> didn't do what the Nazis said, that they would be executed on the spot. And, you know, that may very well have been the case. Um, but nonetheless, at uh, least it would have sent a warning to the other Jews. People. Like, like uh, this is this is what could happen. I don't know. Well, I mean, that could make it so that people would be more obedient, I guess, uh, in the future, in theory. But if there was, I don't have a good solution to what Jews should have done in the circumstances uh, mm -hmm. leading up to World War II. Um, I know that this is often what you say, Ian. You know, I like the idea of eat, meeting up at the sh door with a shotgun, but that's that has the, uh, the the advantage of history. You know what's going to happen to the Jews. When you get to look historically, is twenty twenty. Yes, you didn't know what was going on when they were just rounding them up into ghettos and then Correct. trying to get them onto uh, trains to go to work camps with uh, signs over them where, uh, you know, the work. I don't know. Work is right. They didn't know they were going to be exterminated. They didn't know that that was what was was coming down right. the pike. And let's not forget that the other Western nations refused to take the Jews. The Germans basically wanted to get rid of them. They had this. Uh, their first plan was to send them to Madagascar, or one of the, one of their plans was the United to send States them refused uh, a whole the ship of the damned. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Any st now, these are the people that have won more Nobel prizes than any other ethnic group the world has seen. The United States might have done quite well to receive them, mm. but Franklin they Delano Roosevelt. Back was an anti-Semite. Oh, my. So, you know, I don't know what to say about it, but um, it's it's not an easy problem, but it could have been solved much more readily if, uh, if Western nations would have said, you know, we actually want to save the Jews, bring them here. But they didn't. Yeah, that certainly would have been a better solution, uh, just to allow people to escape and move to somewhere else that would be a safer place to live. But I still stand by the idea that civil disobedience or non-cooperation would have been a much stronger approach uh, than just going along to get along. Because, you know, you're right, Mark. We do have the benefit of history. We do know what they were rounding them up for now, and they didn't know that at the time. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, if you were to refuse the order and they were to execute people then, at least, like you said, that would sort of tip their hand that these are not nice people, that uh, they're not out for your best interest. And maybe that would have given people an alert and, and suggested they be more cautious and avoid detection or, you know, not go along to get along. I don't know. There is no easy answer when you're dealing with psychopaths. But uh, certainly I think that putting them all together in the same place made executing them easier. And so if they were going to have to, if they were going to execute people, better that they do it here and there and make it more difficult on them rather than having them just easily walk into the ghetto uh, and check themselves in, you know, stand and wait to be uh, booked essentially into the ghetto that uh, you're just walking into the trap in that particular case. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. We'll uh, let James back in here. He did have some technical difficulties. James, go ahead. You're doubling down on your stupidity. Hindsight and history, somebody just should have shot Hitler in the head long before he became dictator. There were 46 the attempts on Hitler. It's somebody did try very, I, very hard I, to shoot him in the head. thought, Mark Edge. What? Or can we have a conversation if I may finish a thought. You did finish I'm the not, thought. You said I, Hitler should, be, should have been shot. But go ahead. No, I didn't. But I wanted to say that I, I don't want to speak of hindsight of history because it's meaningless and stupid. 
but it's offensive to say that the Jewish people should have just engaged in non-cooperation because you know what happened. Okay, but I want to know what politician your uncle died for on a Normandy Beach, Mark Edgington, or, or that my father, what corporation he was fighting for in the Ardennes Forest, or five years later in North Korea, or excuse me, seven years later. What politician and corporations was he fighting for, Ian Freeman? What a funny last name. Did you make that Shiite up? Huh? I don't know what you just said there, but we're going to have to dump it out there uh, just to be safe. Well, I said politicians because I really do believe that uh, World War II was caused by U.S. intervention in World War I. If uh, the United States had not intervene intervened in World War I, there would have been much more of a stalemate between the great powers and the Triple Entente or whatever it's called. Um, and you would have had... Uh, excuse me, the, the Triple Entente and the Central Powers, um, you would have had a situation where they didn't have the Treaty of Versailles, which was so arduous on German, uh, German, uh, the Germans to the point where Hitler actually made the, uh, the French go back to the same rail car in the same place 20-something years later and sign his new treaty after he had uh, gone through France. I mean, you think he might have been a little bitter? You think the German people might have been bitter? You don't get peace through bitterness, and this was really the problem. The United States' involvement in World War I from the beginning. So to answer the question, uh, I don't know the names of the corporations, but I know there were some corporations who were manufacturing all the, you know, the boots and the uh, the clothing and the tanks and the, you know, the hardware, the guns, the ammunition. Somebody was manufacturing those things, and they obviously were benefiting from the war effort. So that's pretty crystal clear. And it's you go back really to Smedley easy. Butler, who wrote War is a Racket, where he basically said that it was his job to be a corporate uh, killer. It's really easy. Now, James wants to know, you know, which politicians uh, did uh, my uncle die for on the beaches of Normandy? Well, it's really easy to use World War II as your foil when you're, when you're pro-war. Well, I'm anti-war, and I'm going to use World War I as my foil. Take a look at history, and you'll see World War II, at least the, the European theater, wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for World War I. Mm -hmm. And historians nearly... All agree on this. Well, not just for World War One, right, but also for the Americans' entry into World War One, because isn't that That's uh, what tips the scale specifically? The part, yeah, yeah. Uh, so share your thoughts here. Toll free numbers eight fifty five four fifty three. John is in Charleston, West Virginia. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, John. Hey, man. Uh, you guys have been getting some weird callers lately. That's Free Talk Live uh, for you. The same old crazies. Go ahead. You're, you're one of them. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, that. yeah. Right. Uh, anyway, uh, Hitler tried to uh, take out the Freemasons before he tried to get rid of the Jews. I mean, it, it kind of happened all around the same time. People don't really talk about that much. Yeah, the trade unionists. Yeah. Is that the same thing, and, the Freemasons uh, he, or the trade unionists? I, I don't know. I'm not really sure what you're referring to. I just I don't know either. That's why I'm asking Mark. Mark is nodding, so that doesn't work for our audience who's listening on the radio. What is, are you saying? The trade unionists are the same as the Freemasons? I am not saying that, um, but I'm saying that the that Hitler uh, came after the groups of unions, uh, union workers, and Freemasons were you know were Masons, I assume. Okay. Um, now they're some kind of club, but I don't know exactly the relationship between what they were at that time and the trade unions. What are you getting at, John? Well, actually, uh, whenever they became a club, it was around the American Revolution. Uh, maybe even before then. I'm not really sure. But uh, anyway, he established his own secret society called Two Way. And. You'll have to tell me more about it in a moment. Hang on, John. We'll bring you back here. The toll free number is 855 450 free. You bring up anything. Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. 
Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu-fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy Correspondence Courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Do you ever say, I could care less, when you really mean the opposite? You mean to say, I couldn't care less. It's a common mistake. You are judged by how you speak, especially if you're looking for work with so many more applicants than openings now. But even if you're not, avoiding common misstatements will help you make the most of the dozens of conversations and transactions that crowd your daily routine. So whatever you say, don't say whatever as a single word sentence. It's the most annoying expression in the American English language, according to a recent poll. And avoid cliches like the plague. Just kidding. But seriously, at the end of the day, you'll want to avoid this scenario, sounding like everyone else. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. Moments remain here, but enough time for you with your thoughts. If you dial in now, toll free to 855-450-FREE. That's 1-855-450-3733. And please join us online at freetalklive.com. The features we share with you there are totally free. Now, if you like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live, then please become an amplifier. You can do that over at amp.freetalklive.com. It's five bucks a month, and that's money that we invest into the show to help get us on more radio stations around the country, to bring more internet listeners on board, expand our satellite radio footprint globally. We can do a lot with your five bucks a month. It makes a big difference for us. Please go to amp.freetalklive.com. You'll get perks, too, like access to the AMP-only call-in lines, AMP-only podcast, the AMP-only Facebook group, and more. Go and get the details. Get signed up with any major credit card through PayPal or Use Visa or MasterCard right there on our website, amp.freetalklive.com. That's A-M-P, amp.freetalklive.com. we got John in Charleston, West Virginia. We've been talking about 
uh, World War One, Two veterans uh, stories. We've been to Mark. You've been telling us some stories about some World War One vets uh, who were very young men when they got in and how their perspective changed about war. In a lot of cases, if they live through it, uh, John, you're with us in Charleston, West Virginia. You wanted to talk about apparently the Freemasons. You said they were targeted by Hitler. Uh, go ahead. You just barely had a chance to get your thoughts out. Uh, yeah, they were targeted by Hitler. Um, <clears throat> right around the time he started targeting the Jews, uh, he had it, had it all planned out. And uh, I think his biggest tool in the war was actually propaganda. He uh, had a radio show that the Nazis created, and then they broadcasted it in Britain. I mean, that that's just one small piece of his big propaganda machine. Oh, yeah. Have, have any of you guys heard Charlie and his orchestra's Let's Go Bombing? No, I have not. Oh, it's it's pretty uh, good. It's, what is it? It is from a a German propagandist swing band leader, hmm. and it was a radio show that they sent across the channel, and it was just a song, Let's Go Bombing, Let's... I think the idea behind the song was that it was from the English perspective because it's brutal. Let's let's bomb children. Let's bomb neutrals too, etc. Uh, it's really something to listen to, though. Yeah, thanks for the heads up on that. Sure. So, John, uh, you were saying that before the break there that Hitler created his own secret society. Was that where you were going with all this? Yeah, I, I really don't know that much about Tule, but I, I do know that it was his top generals and a lot of the people that he really trusted were in the society. He wanted to get rid of the Masons because he thought that they were spies. He thought Jewish people were spies. And he actually put his own spies out into the community so he could kind of get a gauge for how people were thinking and what was going on with the population. John, thanks for your call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Mark, there was uh, one more story, correct? Had we gotten into that yet? Earlier? Yeah. Um, those who survived the trenches came home, brought memories that retained the power of to haunt them until the end of their lives. S I, I guess this guy's name is St. John... Battersby was 16 when he was severely wounded in the Battle of the Somme in July uh, 1916. Like all of the teenager, teenage officers, Lieutenant St. John Battersby had uh, responsibilities far beyond his years. As his son Anthony recalls, there's my dad, 16 years old, really in the war. He's responsible for 30-odd men and his decisions may result in them dying or not dying. Hmm. That was it. I don't understand how somebody who's 16 could end up as an officer. It doesn't make any sense to me. But, you know, I, I don't know. Somebody promoted him. Three months after he was, uh, after he was wounded, St. John Batterby was back in France, leading men in the battle again. This was severely wounded, mind you. Mm. He could have opted to stay home, but now the government was taking all those under 19 years of age out of the front lines. But a shortage of experienced officers meant that they were allowing boys like St. John Battersby to stay on if they wished. So here the government knows that he's below the age of 19. They're keeping him anyway. Mm -hmm. A sense of duty compelled St. John to return. After coming back, he was blown up by a German shell and lost his left leg. Uh. Determined to continue helping the war effort, he asked for and received an administrative job in Britain. But years later, after a fruitful life serving as a country vicar, the memories of war, that's a, a preacher for those who don't know what a vicar is. I did not know that. For the memories of war returned, his son Anthony remembered his father's last hours. In the hour or two before he died, he was on the Western Front yelling, The Bosch are coming! We're going over the top now. Right now, deep in the ground floor of his memory was the... Oh, excuse me, I'm, I'm still reading on. I can't... My, my glasses are, are a little... I can't see very well what I'm seeing here. Right now, deep in the ground floor of his memory was the Western Front. And I can really see this. When my dad was dying... I could see how he had lost touch with who he was. He was experiencing something entirely different in that hospital bed than uh, what I was experiencing. And... 
I can imagine. He wasn't there. He was somewhere else. He was kind of somewhere else. Yeah. Mm. Um, and he came so unglued that he actually struck the nurse. Oh, my. Not particularly well. Did they have to tie him down? Um, they were holding him down. Okay. And this is a guy that nobody could, you know, that no two women could hold down. Yep. Um, I, you know, they got there before I did. But um, he, he was just, you know, he just wasn't himself at all. And mm, I can imagine what this guy's like. You know, this must be like, was this the most a uh, pivotal moment of his life, this old man reliving what it was like when he was, when he was 16, 16 years old, going back decades in his life to relive this. It's crazy. I can only imagine, only imagine. So the man facing death was once again the boy who had cheated it so many times. And I just found this to be a powerful article. I don't know the what, what was the source on it again? Teaches us uh, BBC. BBC, okay. BBC.com. I don't know what it teaches us other than I really... You know, thought it was interesting how these they took these three different young men and the situations that they they had to face, what it must have been like to sign up and be a young man. Because child child soldiers are nothing that that has not been eliminated from our, uh, you know, from the planet. Still happening all over the world, and it's sad, you know. Johnny Ray, you were in the military. Uh, any reflections on uh, what's you know these old stories? When I was in the Marine Corps, I was disappointed that there wasn't a war for me to go fight. Is that right? Because you were all jazzed up when you joined up. And yeah, because I was going to defend freedom. Because I was, like. you know, young and stupid. And Do you I think, think that was common? Oh, definitely. I I had conversations about that topic with loads of other Marines while we were at the barracks. About your frustration of you not being able to clap each other on the back and say, "When do we get to go and you know kick kick and kill people?" But they don't say that. Yeah, we said kick ass. Right. Yeah. What they actually mean is to put people's children in the, in the ground. Um, yeah, and I mean, this is, I, I guess that's what you want from your soldiers, right? To be passionate about their work. The The sad part is is that uh, what that causes is it, it, it causes people with uh, hammers to go around looking for nails. So you're welcome to share your thoughts here. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE on this Veterans Day uh, edition of Free Talk Live. Uh, of course, uh, it's so common for veterans to be told thanks for your service. Uh, but many people uh, who are veterans are offended by that statement. They have realized that they were actually serving the politicians, that they were actually serving these corporations, and they, I think, rightfully are upset when people say that to them. There's just this sort of this rote thing that people just spew out whenever they find out that somebody was in the military. My friend cha- was a chaplain at a uh, Catholic hospital, actually, and every Veterans Day or Memorial Day or whatever, they go put uh, flags on uh, the doors of the people who served or all the doors or something like that. This one old guy, um, heart heart condition, um, he had been in World War II, and every time they put the flag there, he'd uh, take it down. Mm. And they put it up a few times, and then he goes to the uh, – and, and my friend was there at the desk and, you know, basically went and through gritted teeth said, don't ever put this on my door again. Now I can't mm-hmm. imagine what it's like for a war. What? Why a World War II vet doesn't want the U.S. flag? A U.S. World War II vet does not want a U.S. flag on his door. But I would well, imagine. Why not? I mean, they, they may have realized that they weren't doing the right thing. I don't know. Um, I think they're that, killing people that otherwise they wouldn't have. I mean, that's that's got to be tough to deal with. I, I think World War II is a more defensible war than than World War One. But it doesn't mean that it's easier to kill people and that that it's easy to justify that. There you go. I, mean, you, I don't know what it's like. I don't right. know what it's like. Neither and do you I. You don't either. I don't. I don't either. I don't want to know. I've I've seen enough damage, uh, PTSD, people being mentally scarred for life. You were just sharing some stories about that, and I imagine that was. I mean, I'm speculating, but I imagine that right. was. A I'm not going to speculate. All I know is a World War II vet said, "Don't ever put that on my door again." Yeah. And he was referring to the U.S. flag. So I'm, I don't think that he really would have been grateful for your thank you for my service. No, certainly not. So, we're out of time for tonight, but Johnny Ray and Mark, thank you for your service for being here on Free Talk Live, and we'll see you tomorrow night. Online in the meantime, freetalklive.com. Nothing. Free Talk Live. That's all libertarians are saying is let's stop the violence. And really, when you put it in those terms, it sounds kind of liberal. Let's stop the violence. Sure, right? it's, a, it's a movement about peace and personal responsibility that could very easily sound like, uh, when you use the word peace, sounds liberal, you know? Right. 
So if the first libertarian you ever meet or hear on the radio is just talking about making government smaller, I can totally understand why you would get confused and think that it's, you know, just a bunch of ultra-right wingers. That's one of the reasons why I kind of shy away from labeling myself that way. Often we get terms like radical used towards us, mm -hmm. but uh, radical, really? Peace, personal responsibility, voluntary interaction between individuals? That's radical? I'll tell you what's radical. Radical's using a gun and a bunch of guys in, in armored suits with helmets to enforce your will on people. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. Yeah! This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write WORMS in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Peace News Now is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, November 11th, 2014. Silver is trading at $15.59 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,155 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $366. Antiwar.com reports Haider al Bara, the head of the self proclaimed government in exile of Syria, the Syrian National Coalition, yesterday blasted the U.S. for its attacks on the Islamic State, saying they are undermining the rebellion they think will eventually land the Syrian National Coalition in power. The Syrian National Coalition is nominally the head of the Free Syrian Army, one of the primary moderate rebel factions, but one which is also virtually entirely landless, as the Islamic State and Jabhat al-Nusra take most of the rebel territory. Bara insisted the Islamic State is only a symptom of the problem in Syria and that the faction taking half of the country could be solved by the U.S. attacking the Assad government instead. Bara was also critical of the U.S. for attacking Nusra, which is al-Qaeda's wing in Syria, saying it was undercutting the Syrian National Coalition's effort for a permanent solution to the crisis, which is to say their installation as the actual government. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's F-A-N-S dot fppradio.com. CNET reports Google likes to call its most ambitious projects moonshots. Now, with the company's latest real estate expansion, it's leasing land from an agency that one could say knows a few things on the topic. NASA on Monday said it is renting the historic Moffett Airfield, a 1,000-acre airbase located four miles from Google's Mountain View, California headquarters, to Google's Planetary Ventures subsidiary. NASA Administrator Charles Bolden said in a statement, As NASA expands its presence in space, we are making strides to reduce our footprint on Earth. Google plans to use the site for space exploration, aviation, robotics, and other emerging technologies, according to the statement. Google agreed to pay $1.16 billion over 60 years for the space and promised to renovate and restore historical Zeppelin hangars on the premises. The move punctuates Google's ever-increasing commitment to projects outside of its main business and moneymaker, search and advertising. 
The list of ambitious projects is long, some of which are run by its Google X research division. Among them are efforts to create 3D site technology, contact lenses for diabetic patients, and research efforts with the goal of lengthening the average person's life. The company has also worked on robotics, balloons to beam internet connections across the globe, and driverless cars. David Ratcliffe, VP of Real Estate and Workplace Services, said in a statement that the company will roll up its sleeves to restore the landmarks on the site. Google declined to make further comment. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Reuters reports three civil rights workers slain in Mississippi in 1964 will be awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, joining Meryl Streep and singer Stevie Wonder among the 19 recipients of America's highest civilian honor this year. The posthumous honorees include James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Michael Schwerner, who were killed as they participated in the Freedom Summer Drive to register black voters in Mississippi. Their deaths helped galvanize support for civil rights legislation and inspired the film Mississippi burning. President Obama said in a statement from activists who fought for change to artists who explored the furthest reaches of our imagination, from scientists who kept America on the cutting edge, to public servants who helped write new chapters in our American story, these citizens have made extraordinary contributions to our country and the world. Other recipients include television newsman Tom Brokaw and Charles Sifford who helped desegregate U.S. professional golf. This has been F. Congress today passed a landmark Social Security reform bill they estimate could save the troubled program billions. The so-called grab life by the balls bill includes provisions to cut the cost of cigarettes in half, outlaws helmets, and adjusts the CDC's recommended amount of sleep from eight hours a night to when you're dead. The bill's short-term initiatives aim to immediately cut Social Security costs in half by replacing senior citizens' monthly checks with vouchers for grain alcohol and extreme sports. I, I got this coupon to motocross over a canyon. Uh, Better do my part to help the deficit. Supporters in Congress say the cost will be offset by the so-called pussy tax on products such as sweaters, vegetables, hand soap, and flu shots. America, would you rather die old, broke, and forgotten, or die a mother legend? The new program follows in the footsteps of the Life is a Cartoon Medicare campaign, which encourages seniors to run full speed off of cliffs and smoke sticks of dynamite. This is the Onion News Network. Check, 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 one, two, one, two, hello, it's Peace News. Welcome, we're live. It's November 4th, 2014. This Tuesday evening, it's 10 p.m. in Keene in the Shire. I'm your host, Derek J. You can learn about me at DerekJ.me. Catch this show on video at peacenewsnow.com slash live. You can also join in the chat room. Uh, today, we've got, so uh, it's voting day. We might be talking about who won some elections. We'll also be talking with, oh, hey, look. Hey, Jack, welcome. 